It's time for Windows Weekly. Paul Theratz here. Mary Jo Foley, too. We barely got Paul because, of course, today's the release of Halo Infinite. Paul has his review. Mary Jo Foley's very excited about a brand new version of Notepad. Yeah. <laughs> and a victory for users as Microsoft backs down on the set as default browser button. It's all coming up with a lot more next on Windows Weekly. Podcasts you love. From people you trust. This is Twit. This is Windows Weekly with Paul Therott and Mary Jo Foley. Episode 754, recorded Wednesday, December 8th, 2021. Pleasure per gigabyte. This episode of Windows Weekly is brought to you by Akamai. Akamai powers and protects life online and is changing how we live, work, and play. See how Akamai is unleashing the Internet of Possibilities for the biggest brands in the world. Visit akamai.com slash WW today to learn more. And by Worldwide Technology and Dell Technologies. With an innovative culture, thousands of IT engineers, application developers, unmatched labs and integration centers for testing and deploying technology at scale, WWT helps customers bridge the gap between strategy and execution. To learn more about WWT, visit WWT.com slash twit. And by Andela. Andela is a global talent network connecting innovative companies like yours with quality technical talent so you have more time to focus on your core business. Visit andela.com slash four dash companies to schedule a complimentary consultation and receive a two-week no-risk trial with their vetted technical talent. It's time for Windows Weekly, the show where we cover the latest news from Microsoft with Mary Jo Foley of ZDNet fame, all about Microsoft.com. Hello, Mary Jo. Hello, Leo. Hello. Paul Therott's also here. Uh, from therot.com. Good to see you, Polly. Little Polly Walnuts. Uh, <laughs> and uh, today we're using a Microsoft product, Skype, because Zoom has failed us. Ooh. Yep. So, uh, are they, just out of curiosity, are they killing Skype and folding it into Teams, or is Skype going to stick around? I ask you this a lot. I know, and we ask them this a lot, and they always say, no, Skype's continuing on for the foreseeable future. Good, because we like it. Yeah, yeah, and, and they actually just announced a bunch of new features for it. Remember, they did. A few months ago. Yep. Good. Yep. Thank yep. you. Thank you. And Microsoft. we had to take five minutes to figure out how it works because we haven't used it in a while. <laughs> I know. I'm like, wait, how do we do this on Skype again? Right. <laughs> on the wrong microphone. I What's suppose we on? should be using Teams, but uh, anyway, this is all. This we is. We haven't got that working yet. <laughs> yeah, this is fine. This is good. I like the yeah. Skype UI. This is nice. So I came yes. in late today, and Paul said it's okay because uh, it's a big day. What is going on? Is, well, we'll get. We're going to get to that. There's a lot of stuff going on. It's it's well a lot, or at least a few important things. Maybe is the way to get to it. And, and uh, lots of little controversies today. So I think this will be kind of. <laughs> I'm here for my briefing. Fill me in. Who wants to right. start? Yeah. Windows 11. Mary Joe. Should we start yeah, with Mary well, Joe? Okay. Yeah. yeah. Remember how we've been complaining on the last few shows about how Microsoft's doing a bunch of things with Edge, especially around making it hard to select other browsers besides Edge if you use Windows 11. Well, they stepped back a little from the cliff <gasps> last week. Shocking. Not as much a as we little. had hoped, by the way. No. Yeah, Steve Gibson even reported this uh, yesterday on Security Now. Yeah. He was so excited. You can now, yeah. well, there's a one-button default. Browser. Well, it's, it's not, in so it's, not, it's in the it's dev not a channel. Fault. <laughs> so no. we'll get to that. It's not also one. it's in the dev channel only. So that means it may or may not at some point ever right. become a feature, right? right? And the way that this was discovered is a little disappointing. Well, it's it's interesting. Raphael found it in the dev build. Credit it wasn't even Raphael. called out. Yeah. It was not called no, out call in out. the notes. Yep. Um, and then when people talked to Microsoft and they said, Hey, there's this thing in the in the in the build that you guys didn't talk about that makes it look like you're going to make it easier with a button to select other browsers. You're like, yeah, we're experimenting on that and see oh. be based on user feedback, blah, blah, oh. blah. I'm like, yeah, people hate the way you're doing it now. So <laughs> you're stepping back from the cliff. Okay. <laughs> Let's do it. Does, does anyone, is, is there anyone on the Shilly or Mary Jo, I mean, uh, do either of you, are either of you running windows 10 right now? Not uh, windows. No, I'm on windows, windows 11. I, I moved both okay. my ship machines yeah. to Because this is something I, I tested this change today. What I haven't yeah. had time to do is compare it to how it works in Windows 11, uh, 10, sorry. 
Yeah. What I can tell you is it it's not what everyone hoped it was. <laughs> so, oh. um, and yeah. So, so I'm going to go off the, so what I'm going to have to do is go off the top of my head here. So I, if you're out okay. there and I'm describing this wrong, you know, sorry, you don't have to correct me. It doesn't matter. I'm going to look it up, but and I'm gonna write it. <laughs> so thinking back to windows 10, you install Chrome or Firefox or whatever. And one of the first right. things that browser asks you is, would you like to change this to be your default browser? And you say, yes. Mm -hmm. And then it loads the settings page, which is uh, settings, apps, default apps. And, and in Windows 10, it has a list of, for some reason, like app types, it, you know, uh, Im image program, movie program, web browser, you know, a few others. Right. Mm -hmm. There's a little pop-up that comes up and it says, you know, we'd really like you to use Edge. Are you sure? Edge is mm -hmm. safe and mm -hmm. secure and fat, blah, blah, blah. Anyway, you say, yeah, I'm sure. I don't care. And then yeah. it changes Chrome or Firefox to your default browser for the most part. Uh, the, the one thing I want to test is I don't think it changes everything, but it is a one click kind of, it's kind of a two click deal, but it, it, it changes most of the major associations to the browser of your choice. Mm -hmm. I think the one mm -hmm. off the top of my head that I believe doesn't change is PDF, but because you've installed a new browser and thus a new application that's possible to use for PDFs, the next time you open a PDF on windows 10, you'll get that, you, you know, open with dialog which is mm -hmm. like a Windows 8 style dialog, by the way, still in Windows 10. And it says, hey, which application do you want to use? And you can choose yeah. an application for just this time, or you can say, make this the permanent choice. And then that will switch to PDF. So there's still a little wiggle room, I guess, is my point. Yeah, right. So in Windows right. 11, the default version of Windows 11, you install the, the current version, the shipping version. You install Chrome or Firefox and it says, hey, would you like to install or would you like to make this your default browser? And you say, yes. And it goes to apps, default apps, but that interface does not have that list of major app types, like whatever I said, pictures, mm -hmm. video, web browsers, and mm -hmm. a few others. Instead, it, it lets you search for a file or link type, and then it has a list of applications alphabetically on your computer, and you can set defaults for them. So you have to kind of scroll oh, down. That's so you scroll awful. Down to, uh, yeah, scroll yeah. down to Firefox, and then there are a dozen to 15 I'm going to call them file types and um, protocols. They call them file types and link types, whatever. And this yeah. is things like HTML, HTML, PDF, H SHTML, et cetera, et cetera. Most of them are web documents. Some of them are actually image files like SVG or um, AVIF and things like that. Or maybe that's a video file, whatever. But it has a bunch of them. And you have to mm -hmm. go through one at a time. And the first time you change one of them, it says, hey, are you sure? Really mm -hmm. want you to use Edge. And you're like, yeah, yeah, I'm sure. Yeah. And now, now you've changed one file type. And you have to manually yeah. go through every single one of those. But the tricky bit, and this is the thing I'm not sure of in Windows 10. For example, Windows 10 has like a news and information link on the on the taskbar, which is basically mm -hmm. what the widgets interface in Windows 11. I don't yeah. know off the top of my head. But I, I, I wouldn't be surprised to discover that that still opens in Edge, even if you change all these things. I don't remember. I, I don't because I never used it. Mm -hmm. I don't know. It's possible yeah. if you do a start search. And choose a web link in Windows 10, even after changing all of these or changing the default. It maybe it still opens an edge. I'm actually not sure, but what I am sure of is in Windows 11, it absolutely still opens an edge, and that was the controversy. Mm -hmm. Yep. So, Edge Extractor, uh, third-party browsers, I think Brave and uh, Mozilla both implemented workarounds to this, so that when you said I want this to be my default, it changed everything to be your default. And the mm -hmm. outrage that occurred after that was Microsoft in a uh, dev build now a couple months ago, probably or a month or so, uh, implemented a, a fix, if you will, for this problem of theirs, which is we're not going to let these people, these companies work around this setting. Right. We, 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 we want widgets to open an edge. We want uh, yeah. start search to open an, an edge. And the reason they gave to the public, which is not the real reason, is for experience. Is, you know, We want them to have the best possible experience. What they really want is for you to access... MSN and yep. big on the back end. Okay. Great. And that the the change they made with this one button thing doesn't affect that at all in Windows 11, right? Right. That's part of it. Right. So there's two there's two big changes. Right. So or two big things, I, I guess. When when you see a screenshot of a, a thing that says set as default, you think, oh, it's just like it was in Windows 10. And it's not. Right. So if you're in the dev channel on Windows 11 and you install uh, a Chrome or Edge or, or Chrome or Firefox, and it says, hey, would you like to make this to the default? You say, yeah, I would. And it loads exactly the same page that you see today in 
uh, the stable version of Windows 11. It's the default apps page. So settings, apps, default apps. It still has that thing where you can search at the top and it still has that list of applications. The difference is when you go to, I'm just doing it now so I can look at it. When you go to Firefox or whatever you installed, there is that yeah. button at the top that says set as default. And you think, oh, good, look, they mm -hmm. fixed it. It's it's still multiple steps, you know? Yeah. And when you click but, on it, it says, yeah. sure, we'd really like to use Edge. Okay. Yeah. And you say, I'm sure. Yeah. Puts a little checkbox so, next to it, and then you can see what it's yeah. associated with. And you know what? It's not associated with that much at all. No. It's It changes two or three of the file types. It doesn't mm -hmm. change. You still have to go through the list and ch manually change most of them. I would say one, two, three, four, five, six, seven ish of them to Firefox or the browser you choice. It really doesn't change that much. It basically changed. I, I, I've changed things here, so I can't tell for sure, but it changes HTM, it changes HTML. Yeah. That might, that might be all of it. It's not too much. I took screenshots uh, on a different mm -hmm. computer, which is what I was looking for earlier. What happens it might if change you just HTTP. change the HTML and HTM? Is it like, is Edge going to still open a lot? Uh, not a lot. So but for some, so things. basically, all right, I would say it's 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 the two major file types, HTML and HTML, and it's probably mm -hmm. uh, almost certainly HTTP and HTTPS. Those are the two uh, protocols we call them, right? So um, that basically means you know normal web. You you click on a link in an email program, it will open in your browser of choice. It doesn't change some of the things we think of as being kind of. Internet Explorer now Edge uh, file types like XHTML, XHT, um, you know, whatever. But PDF is not included as well. So I don't think that's really – I don't think the the PDF situation is much different. No, I like using I, Edge just, for my PDF reader. I don't mind mm -hmm. that. Mm -hmm. Maybe no, that's but what you they're at least will get the, the The nice thing there is if you do open a PDF – this I did test. If you open a – no, actually, no, I did. I'm sorry. I believe if you open a PDF – It'll ask you at it, that point. It will ask you okay. at that point, I think. First time. I think. First time. Yeah, yeah I think okay. so. And then you can set it as the default. But what it's not going to change is that stuff that Microsoft said they were going to block, right? It's not going to change the stuff from Start Search. It's not going right. to change the stuff from uh, uh, widgets. I guess Cortana might be included in this. I don't know mm -hmm. what the full this list is. It seems like but... a good compromise because most of the web browsing yeah. you want to do will work, right? I agree. Well, I, I think this is this like let's take it as a win. Right. Like they're not <laughs> well, going to change okay. everything. That's all we're going to get. Okay. So <laughs> I'm, not, not. I'm going to call it a tie. So it's a, a step tie. in, in okay. the right direction. I think this is something yeah. they've been planning to do for a while. I don't think this just happened. Yeah. I, no. I They've always intended to block that stuff in the back end where, the, you know, because they want to use Microsoft right. services. Okay, fine. Yeah. Um, I, the, the issue I have with it, and I'm just thinking of normal people here, is mm -hmm. the, even the Windows 10 interface was a little much in a way, right? Because it was, yeah. The previous Windows versions, if you were using Chrome or Firefox or whatever, and you said, I want this to be in my default browser, you said, yes, that was the end of it. There was yeah. no interface to bring up. It just did it. And now, yeah. or Windows 10, it brings you to an interface where you actually have to go, yeah, okay, yes, 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 nag right. me. Okay, I still want it. That's fine. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. This one is actually still a step back from that because there is no main interface in default apps and settings mm -hmm. where you say, I, this you know, browser, image program, video program, whatever those choices are. Mm -hmm. You have to go, you have to scroll through the list, find the app you just installed, remember the name. I know it's not hard, but I mean, you have to know the name of it and you have to go find it and you still, and you have to set it and you still get nagged. And then you still have to go through a list of uh, file types and yeah. think about, some of them are weird. It's like, do I want to open an AVIF file with Firefox? Yeah. I don't even know what that is. Like Same. what's a WebP file? It's it's. Uh, do I want to open? No, and that if you don't know, right. if you don't know, nobody who's a normal user knows. That's right? what I'm and saying. That's, that, that's what I mean. And that's so, what they're counting on, right? They're counting I, on this being confusing, right? They right. want well, it to be confusing. Okay, so WebP <laughs> is what happens when you save a website. Uh, it saves it as a WebP. It's a web package. So, mm -hmm. do I want that to open in Firefox, or is that kind of a bundle that I want mm -hmm. to open in Edge? Mm -hmm. I think what Microsoft's trying to do here is let you say, for browsing purposes, I want to choose my browser. But there's a whole bunch of other stuff Edge does, like PDFs, right, right. that should just okay. be I, for yeah. Edge until unless you express it otherwise. Yeah. And that you can do onesie-twosie. So so this default okay. button is going to do 90% <laughs> of what you do, right? Or yeah. almost 100%. I, I think, do. yeah. It, for, for basic web browsing, it's going to be fine. And I do think that's I think it's, it's important yeah. and that's good. I, but I still... Right. 
it's still a little underhanded. I, I really think what they're trying to do is drive edge usage artificially so they can claim they have something, some number. Some <laughs> it still opens install. when you open a web uh, P. Yeah. That counts. But we're not just using it to install Chrome anymore. We also use it to open PDFs. Like, which was, right. which is kind of what I want to do. <laughs> no, yeah. I like, you know, I don't want to well, install well, Adobe Reader, so I like it that Edge yeah. opens no, PDFs. No, but but and Firefox and Chrome also open PDFs. Why? Well, if, if that's true. When I say I want this to be the default, it didn't say default web browser. It just says default. Right. I want it to yeah. be the default for anything it could be the default for. Yeah. You know? Are they still so, blocking what Firefox did? Yes. Okay. And then Kev yeah. Brewer asks, does the, does the behavior change in Home and Pro? Does it matter? No, I don't believe so, but I haven't. No, right. no I actually tested this on ARM, if that matters to anybody. But no, I, I don't know. I can't imagine it. it's different. Okay. Yeah. Oh, no, so I'm going to play devil's advocate here for a second because I was thinking about this the other day. Um, yeah. Why does Microsoft have to let you use a browser other than Edge? I mean, Windows is their operating system. Well, there's this little right? thing called the EU. Well, Chairman. No, seriously. No, <laughs> no, I'm being serious here because Windows doesn't have a monopoly on operating systems anymore. Right. No, but that's not okay. So first of all, you can define markets in all kinds of different ways. Um, True. Did get Windows in trouble does, for bundling does back in the nineties, right? Systems. I know, but this is a whole new world. Like the if you, it's not the dominant operating system anymore, and but it's not, they can point to. I feel. <laughs> I feel like. It is the dominant operating system on computers. On desktop uh, when, PCs. When Microsoft got pulled before yeah. the DOJ in 1999, Macintosh right. had five percent market share. Right. Do you know what they have today? Eight. Yeah. So I know, but I'm the sorry, way people look they, at market now is operating systems. Like they put phones in there, they put no, everything no, no. together. I, I don't. You they can do. define the <laughs> antitrust regulators can define a market however they wish, and one of those yeah. markets is desktop computers. And okay. Microsoft absolutely has a monopoly. Okay, and I would say since it's their operating system, why can't they say the most used <laughs> app? In their operating system should be ours, and I I don't like this, but I could see oh how they go down this mental rabbit hole and justify doing what they're doing. They literally were hauled before antitrust <laughs> before the government like two of decades South Korea, ago, right? United States, two decades the ago, the EU, Russia. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, because of this exact crime. Two this decades has, ago, nothing has changed. <laughs> it's Maybe same, Paul, uh, it's time to push the envelope again. Let's That's just, what they're thinking. Let's just That's prod totally them and see what, what happens. That's thinking, everybody. This is what they're thinking. Uh, well, they, I, I, I believe, I think is. what they're thinking, <laughs> you're getting towards something. I mean, look, at, at some point you say personal computing is not just computers. In fact, computers yes. are the smallest right. percentage of personal computing right. today because of smartphones mostly, but also yeah. tablets and other, other, other devices. Mm -hmm. yeah, yeah, fair enough. But, right. but you can also set a default browser on those other platforms. So... The, the, that precedent yeah. was set because yeah. of what happened to Microsoft. I mean, if Microsoft, Microsoft, yeah, they may be playing this game where maybe they won't notice because they get bigger problems with Google and Facebook and Apple and whatever else. Yeah. Fair enough. But that doesn't mean that what they're doing now is not wrong um, and probably is still illegal because you could define that market as, well, you do have, this is the monopoly you do yeah. have. It might be the so only I, monopoly. Microsoft yeah, has. I I believe they believe um, the world has changed and they're not going to get taken down by any antitrust regulators because of this. I do believe this. I've heard, I've had people say this to me. Okay. Um, so, so, <laughs> so they're, they, is, they let's, think. Let's, they, up, let's just talk about Apple for a second. And this is something yeah. Leo will know better than I, because I don't yeah. use a Mac every single day. However, right. my understanding and based on my limited experience with the Mac is yeah. if I install Chrome or edge on the Mac, mm -hmm. It says, do you want to make this default? You say yes, and that's, that's right. the end of it. It's the default. Yeah. That's right. Macintosh has 8% market share. They, I mean, it, it, they're the company that could get away with that, <laughs> not Microsoft. Right. Right? Yeah. So, But they don't I, do it. Like I said, I'm playing I, devil's advocate here because yeah. I would like I would like Microsoft to feel like Edge was such a good browser that it could compete fairly in the market. There you go. What they're, what they're doing with Edge lately is making it not the best browser. That's um, right. And but by the way, driving people exactly away right. from that's, it. <laughs> that's right. That's right. In yeah. fact, the argument, I mean, until about maybe six months ago, you, you could have made the argument, look, it, it is, yeah. Edge is that thing they said it would be. Mm -hmm. Google Chrome mm -hmm. without the Google tendrils everywhere, right. without all the tracking. Yep. That sounds appealing. It does. You know? um, then and, they and added we, shopping. Look, right? bait, <laughs> and stuff. I mean, I, some people yeah. look at the features I've complained about they're adding to Edge and said, I don't, you know, what's the big deal? I, I like, like that it. stuff. 
Yeah. Or I can remove it if I don't want it. I can yep. disable it. Okay. Mm -hmm. Fair enough. But the stuff they're doing to make it really difficult for normal people to yep. use the product they chose yep. is 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 yep. user hostile at best and is probably almost certainly illegal. I don't think it's illegal, but I think it is user hostile and I don't think they care. We're going to find out, I think. Yeah. You know, Who do you think I is going to bring them up for antitrust on this, though? I'm curious. Because Edge has, what's the Edge's share? No, wait, <laughs> yeah. what's Edge's share of the browser market? Is it like 5% or it's something? Not, that's not the, the issue isn't Edge's share. It's it's Windows share. Yeah. Microsoft but that's how they're going to defend it, this is, I feel the, like. The EU brought this change to Android. The EU made them have a balance yeah. screen. Yeah, I remember Europe, though the ballot the didn't do anything. You go into the system. But it was a What's joke. That? No one ever did it, right? The no, browser it's, it's, ballot ended it, up no. being a joke. But no, it's what do you mean? It's there. It's, it's there, but no one ever uses it. Like it's you have I mean to use people it. you have to use it before you use Android. What I just mean? mean it didn't change the share of browsers. It did okay. nothing. But <laughs> that's but, share. but that's because, by the way, in the perception of the public, Chrome is the best browser. Right. That's yeah. why. Yeah, that's why it didn't agree. change. If, by the <laughs> way, if Microsoft was hauled before antitrust courts all over the, the world and they had to change this and everything changed, yeah. and Edge had 90% or 65% to match what Chrome yeah. has, used yeah. to share on on, uh, on Windows, fine. The use, the the, the yeah. populace is spoken, you know, but that's not what they have. They're, they're yeah. doing this to increase that usage. They're that's trying. the illegal part. That's the bundling. That's the... Yeah. You know what? What the sad part is for them not for us, but for them, is they're doing all these things to try to increase usage and meanwhile shooting themselves in the foot, right? <laughs> At the same time as they're right. like trying to lock you in, they're making edge okay. worse. The, the not right? any thinking person apprised of the steps they've taken and the promises yeah. they've made to block yeah. the workaround would think, okay, this must yeah. be a really crappy browser. <laughs> because, <laughs> yeah. I mean, they have to why, force why you would to you use be it, forcing right? it on people? I know, yeah. It doesn't make yeah. sense. You know, no, it's crazy. So I, it's, it is a yeah. weird combination of. Uh, I'm just so, I, like I said, I'm playing. I'm playing devil's advocate here because I want the ability to choose my own browser and make my own choice on the default. I do. Um, yeah. One thing that surprised me a lot. This is tangentially related here to to this announcement mm -hmm. last week. So when this all came to light last week uh, about Microsoft adding this new button to let you select a default browser, I was watching. Mm -hmm. Some of the people who work on Edge's accounts on Twitter to see how they were going to react, yeah, right? right? And so I, I've i always thought the Edge team must be embarrassed that Microsoft was doing this because it's it's like showing that they don't think the browser can win on its own merits. No, that's not that wasn't the reaction. They were mad. They were mad about it. And I'm like, oh. <laughs> wait, wait. They were huh. mad because they made it easier to set another browser yeah. as the default. Yeah, and wow. I was like, "Oh, so wait!" That's and they and I saw people saying stuff like, "I'm biting my tongue. I'm not going to comment on this. Like, I'm steaming, but I have thoughts." What? And I'm like, "Oh, interesting." So I I always gave you guys the benefit of the doubt, and I thought you wanted to compete on your own right. merits, but maybe that so isn't too. the case. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> or yep. if you do have an argument why this is a bad idea, you should say it publicly because I'm curious why you is, think it's bad. What they can't point to is uh, some Apple platform, some Google platform, yeah. some Linux version where you can't do this. They can't yeah. say, well, those guys, you know, even Apple made this possible on yeah. the iPhone, which right. I, was a right. step no one thought they would ever take. Um, right. And they, they have forced their own little to do it. They're kind of forced, stuff, right? Yeah. yeah. I don't know if they're uh, forced. I'm not I don't sure know why they forced, did actually. that. Actually, I don't believe anyone. No, planned. no. Does anyone I mean, actually users use a browser, it. a different browser well, on you, yeah, iPhone? You're, it's an interesting situation because, yes, you can, yeah. but you're still going to use WebKit because what Apple does do behind the yeah. scenes That's right. is force you to use their engine. So yeah. even if you're using mm -hmm. Firefox, you're using Safari's yeah. engine regardless. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. Apple, mm -hmm. I think that that's an interesting kind of uh, sleight of hand incredible. they're playing there. Incredible. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Yeah, <laughs> I agree with you, Mary Jo, that they they don't think this will receive the attention. They don't. Uh, I, I I I'm sure they're playing that game. Um, they are, but I think they <laughs> receive attention from regulatory bodies. You know, I've said this before. I mean, this yeah. is it's user hostile. You know, and and it I is. don't. It's like an, an insurance yeah. company. When 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 uh, or not insurance a car company like when when is a car company forced to go to the expense of adding airbags to cars? 
when the cost of all the lawsuits mm -hmm. is adds up to be more than the cost of just implementing the airbags. Yep. They don't do it out of the goodness yep. of their heart. They're forced to no. do it, you know. Mm -hmm. So in this case, it's mm -hmm. like, well, okay, I, we're going to going to make a few people upset about this, but we're going to earn more revenue from whatever stuff happens on the back end between, you know, Edge, MSN, and Bing or whatever. And mm -hmm. we're trying to grow this Bing business for some reason, um, which never seems to have taken off. Yeah. MSN, I don't know what the, <laughs> what the point of this is. <laughs> but, um, yeah. you know, it, the problem is Microsoft is a data-driven company, right? We talk about yeah. this a lot. They're really into telemetry. You always hear about this. What you don't see in telemetry is the other side of the equation. You don't see the disgruntledness in people like us who know what's happening. And you don't see the confusion in the face of the normal human being who has no idea why this is so terrible. And didn't this used to be easier? And this mm -hmm. creeping feeling that like, what is this thing that came up that I didn't, I, I specifically wanted, I, I use Chrome. What is this other thing? Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. the effect that that might have over time and how those people might just, when the next time comes around to upgrade a computer, they might say, I'm just going to get a Chromebook or a Mac or something. Mm -hmm. I, I, you know, it's, you can't put numbers to that. And that's the thing I think they're overlooking is mm -hmm. the psychological impact that this has on people that use their platforms. They're, it's very easy to see up, down revenues or traffic or usage or whatever. It's very hard to see that you're making someone upset. You know, That'd be fun if we could ever... No, you know, it'd be fun if we could ever set in a focus group that they do, because you know they do millions of these, right? Where you put yeah. normal users for Windows 11 in a room and you suddenly make Edge pop up, even though Google Chrome is their browser, and see what people do. Yeah. <laughs> like, how so do they, by, what are so they, by the way, this, do they notice um, this, it? Number one, first, we do they were talking notice about the Beatles it? Thing. There's a, the Beatles documentary, right? Leo, yeah. have you watched the whole thing? No, I'm about halfway through. I've watched okay, this so half, I, second I'm not, after the, I'm not, There's no spoiler there's here. A, but, I, we kind of know what happened, I think. So it's right. okay. There's a rooftop yeah. concert. Yes. Right? These yes. guys get on yeah. top of a roof in London with a yeah. really loud PA system and they just play the <laughs> first six, the, uh, the rocking is six songs on the, the, the album they just and created. And then they get shut down by the bobbies. Everyone stops and looks up at the street. Yeah. The cops come, they're freaking out. They got 30 calls. 30 calls in minutes from people complaining. Businesses Why the, on the street. What's all this noise from these? And then, but they interview all the people in the street. Nine out of yeah. 10 of them are like, oh my God, that's the Beatles. The isn't Beatles it? This is playing. amazing. I love oh this God. song. This is, I love, that's Paul McCartney. I can tell his voice. Yeah. They love it. And then every once in a while, there's an old person who's like, oh, you know, <laughs> yeah. so it's like they got 30 call, they got 30 complaints, right? They yeah. probably made 3,000 people ecstatic that day. There are people mm -hmm. on the street who are like, I wish they would do this every day. This has turned this dour city into a place of fun and no happiness. Kidding. And yeah. you don't, you don't usually get that. That feedback is really hard to get. You know, yeah. the complaints are simple. <laughs> you know, yeah. so from the from the cops' perspective, they have data. That shows 30 people mm -hmm. complains. We, we complain. We have to shut this down. What they don't know is the 3,000 people who are rocking out to a free concert in the street yeah. and loving every second of it. Yeah, that's Did a you really, gather that? Feedback? Boy, that's a good no. – thank you for working the Beatles yeah. into this. That's great. I know. Good nice. Analogy. Nice yeah. way to segue into that. <laughs> no, but I mean that's the thing. It's – you know, yeah. data in isolation doesn't mean anything. That's right. Yeah. Right. You know? you got to measure gruntlement. Right. Yes, the yeah. gruntlement counts as much but as you the disgruntlement. Yep. Don't you also wonder, like, what got to them that they even thought about putting this button in there, right? Like, they were dead set against this. Like, something happened, right? Either well, somebody oh, actually, warned them. That's the thing. So, actually, think back. I've said yeah. this a couple of times now on the show. On the day or the week of the Windows 11 launch, we had a virtual briefing and people asked questions. Okay. Right. And the question came up, hey, you've got this crazy interface for changing the default browser. And I, yeah. I've said this multiple times. Again, this is just, it's anecdotal. I accept that. But, and it's, it was off the record in the sense that I can't tell you who said this. I mean, yeah. I, so yeah. it doesn't matter who said it. But the person or people that we talked to, and you were there, were confused by this reaction. Mm -hmm. And our, yeah. our point was not to make this harder for people. We're absolutely going to take a look at this. And I took that to mean they were going to do something like they have now done in this button. I don't think that this is a new reaction to something from November or, or whatever. I think I do. this was, I do. Okay. Well, <laughs> I think somebody, on. somebody right. maybe in the EU said some, Hey guys, no, no. nope. Nope. Okay. All right. Well, whatever <laughs> or, the reason, um, or some it looks, big it looks customer, good in a screenshot. Right? <laughs> it, what it looks like is they've addressed the problem, yeah. but this reminds I just, me of, I just, I just am saying, I wonder what made it happen. 
That's all. <laughs> Every three months or so in the Windows 10 timeframe, there would be like this yeah. privacy thing would happen. Right. And they'd be like, listen, guys, we're listening to your feedback and we're going to make it right. more transparent. And they yeah. kept doing this. They did this again and again and again. Yeah. You know what they never did was make it possible to do the thing everyone was asking for. Stop right. tracking me. <laughs> I just yep. give me a switch. You can mm -hmm. bury it wherever you want in the UI, but give me an on off switch where you don't collect any yep. data from me ever. They should yep. have done it because no one would ever, the percentage of people that would do it. They could have hidden it, right? I know. Yeah, they, no, one, no one would have cared. But they, yeah, and they engaged I agree. in what I called, I called it uh, privacy theater. And that's yep. what this is. This is set it default is. theater. Look, there's a button. It looks, it looks just like the button we used to have. It does the same thing. No, it doesn't. <laughs> it's not the same yeah. button. Yeah. So there's a Although, button. I guess we got to. Like, like we started out by saying, if it solves 90% of the times when. Yeah, no, no, I, right. I'm That's using important. a browser. I'm yeah. happy. I'm like, okay, you can take your 10% and do your little big way, MSN thing over there. <laughs> you can find it, right? So like I said, uh, yeah, you know, think of your yeah. mother. I think of my mother or any normal yeah. human being. You, you just right. install Chrome or, or um, Firefox. Yeah. Do you want to make this the default browser? Yes. I want anyone who's listening to the show right now to go to settings, apps, default apps, yeah. and tell me how a normal person would set the default browser from that page. It, it is... <laughs> you have to really know what you're doing. Uh, to us, we're technical people. We get it. I've done it a million times. So even as I describe it, I'm like, hey, what's the big deal? I'll go find Chrome or whatever. It's it's actually kind of a big deal. It is. It it's, used to be a hard. lot easier too, right? I mean, yes. that's the it's point. It's still extra steps is my point. Yeah. yeah. You don't see that button when you go there. You have to go find the browser first. Yeah. That's all. Uh, look, yeah. it, it is a step forward. Like I said, it's a step forward. Yeah. And now that we've spent like 30 minutes on this one... No, it's I good. think this is it's really good. important. No, I is. like that I like that we're talking about this because a lot of yeah. the assumptions I had about why they might have done this in the first place and why they're undoing it. Like I keep thinking about this because I, I don't think they yeah. ever intended to change this when they told us they were would take it into consideration. They just say that to us, you know, like that, oh shut the press up. Tell them that. Okay, good. <laughs> Let's go. <laughs> well, they heard from somebody, maybe just howling users. Maybe, maybe maybe that was all it took. Maybe. I mean, well, that people wrote. I mean, I wrote nice. about it. Uh, yeah. Other people wrote about it. Yeah. And then by the time yeah. we got the chance to have the briefing, someone said, "Hey, um, you implemented yeah. this crazy interface. I mean, <laughs> it, it, it's clearly anti-user. What what are you? What were you thinking?" And it was like, "Oh, like what yeah. are you talking about? We didn't mean anti-user. We love our users. Yeah, we'll look yeah. at it. You know. Yep. All right. That was the first line of the rundown. <laughs> I know. <laughs> <laughs> we're gonna, we're I know, gonna we buried no, the lead. I, I don't mind. We, we'll get to the lead. There is a the huge lead, story it's coming up, but we'll it get is. to that yeah. in a moment. First, there's more than one huge story coming up. Lots of huge stories. Yeah. Stay tuned for the excitement. <laughs> but first, let's talk about our sponsor, Akamai. It's funny, I'm, I'm reading the world's longest book, uh, James Missioner's Hawaii. And Akamai is used quite a bit in the pigeon in the book. And every time he says it, I'm going, I know Akamai. It's, it's, in Hawaii, it means kind of like cool. Uh, when it comes to the internet, it means, well, a company that's changing uh, how we live, work, and play by powering and protecting life online. If you want to be on the cutting edge of innovation, you want to be operating at the edge of the internet. You know, And this is one of the things that's really changed in, uh, in modern times. Uh, nobody can get you closer to the edge, closer to your users. That's why you want to be there, right? Then Akamai. Because Akamai has 10 times the number uh, of locations of the nearest competitor. 4,000 points of presence all over the globe. So that means you're always closer to your end user with Akamai. Um, they built the really the, the largest and most sophisticated edge platform in the world. And they do it because their customers, the biggest innovators in the world, can power and protect Protect is important, by the way. Their greatest ambitions. If you go to akamai.com slash ww for Windows Weekly, you'll see how Akamai powers and protects life online for your customers, your visitors, your listeners. Um, Akamai stops some of the most dangerous threats launched at the internet because they've got their fingers everywhere, right? Everyone online, every day, their unrivaled edge platform intelligence sees more internet conditions in order to avoid bottlenecks and defend at the edge. And, and, and to that end, Akamai has very talented, very smart experts, threat researchers. They're right there on the front lines of protecting and delivering digital experiences. 
Their proximity, their scale helps developers build better apps and put experiences closer to their customers. And of course, with Akamai, you get the industry-leading zero-second SLA and 100% platform availability. They, they're they not afraid to stand behind their commitments. They've got your back. All Akamai-backed SLAs include time to mitigate, quality of mitigation, time to alert notification, time to respond. These are all commitments to you from Akamai. Time to access a mitigation resource and individual TMM SLAs based on specific attack vectors. In other words, Akamai keeps your digital experiences closer to users than anyone and threats farther away. And they commit to it. With Akamai, you can provide the best possible experience for your customers. Customers, what does that mean? Well, they get content, they get apps, they get sites, they get the video they need without lag, without interruption, without latency, even during unexpected traffic spikes. You, as a provider, can prepare for spikes in demand and optimize resources to provide the best experience for your customers. You'll be amazed at Akamai's unparalleled performance. And I love it because you'll always be just one network hop away from 85%. 85% of the world's internet users. Akamai gives you the power to innovate right at the edge. Your logic, your functions, they're deployed and active at the nearest proximity to your end users. You're getting the fastest end user experience around the globe. It's, it, Akamai makes it easy to build right at the edge using JavaScript so you can innovate in real time. And you get low latency access to data for custom code at the edge. Akamai can optimize your API traffic delivery for edge applications too. Look, I know you know Akamai. I know you know their reputation. And and you don't really have to just take my word for it. Listen to this. This uh, Even with how much respect I have for Akamai, this blew me away. Akamai is trusted by all, all top 50 global media companies. All top 20 global e-commerce companies. All top 50 global telecom carriers. Over 500 banks globally, including the top 25 in the U.S. and 22 of the top 25 in EMEA, in, the, the, in Europe, in the Middle East, and Asia. I mean, <laughs> that kind of says it all. Akamai is there powering and protecting digital experiences in a way no one else can. Ten times the locations of competitors for the fastest customer experience available. You're getting the market leader in CDN, video delivery, web performance, DDoS protection, web application, firewall. It's, it's just no one can compete with Akamai when it comes to setting you up for success and scalability online. So do me a favor. Check out Akamai.com slash WW. Learn how Akamai powers and protects life online. Give your customers the best possible experience online and see for yourself what life with Akamai is all about Akamai, A-K-A-M-A-I dot com slash WW. It's Hawaiian for cool. Akamai dot com slash WW. Thank you, Akamai, for supporting Windows Weekly. And thank you, Windows Weekly listeners and viewers, for supporting us. Make sure you use that address, Akamai dot com slash WW. On we go <laughs> to line two of the show. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. New dev build out. Yeah. Is yeah, this one this of the top a, Is this one of the big stories? No. Not as big uh, as it no just pad, had, but, This yeah. just happened before we started. I mean, I it doesn't deserve too much attention other than the fact that they added some new features, which, you know, it's been kind of slow moving in recent uh, months. But uh, yeah. I don't know. What do you, is there anything you want to focus on here? I don't, yeah. <laughs> I don't know if this... So I think the biggest feature in today's build is this thing called voice access, which I thought when I first read their blog post was just a rename of voice typing. So voice typing is the ability to go into a text box and use your voice to type text, right? Dictate basically. Um, but voice access is more than that. It's very confusing in my view and how this was written, but it's an additional accessibility setting where you're going to be able to use voice to actually control your PC. So, you know, to right click, to um, open an app, to switch apps, you're going to be able to do that by voice. And it's not it, it's not meant to be just for people who need it for accessibility. It's meant to be for anyone who wants to use their voice to control these features. So it's it's not going to replace voice typing. I asked them that and they said no. It's going to go alongside voice typing, I guess. Um, and Together, these two things are supposed to let you do a lot more with voice input than you can do currently with Windows. Yeah. 
So I thought I thought that one was interesting. The other ones I didn't really care that much about, like Spotlight, desktop pictures, you know, that you can rotate through. Well, it's, it's kind of fun. You know, it's cute. You, they yeah. have that unlock. The pictures are nice. Since, yeah, the, yeah, the pictures are super nice. They are. The big one to me is the widgets update. You know, the... Um, Oh yeah. If yeah. you if you look at widgets in Windows 11, which is news and information in Windows 10, it's like what, what's the big problem here? Yeah. Uh, it's, in Microsoft's view, it's uh, the location <laughs> that this thing <laughs> appears in on the taskbar. Yeah. So they're testing putting it over on the far left of the taskbar, which is where the start button should be, and uh, they're bringing back the uh, uh, the weather, you know, forecast display that used to be in the mm -hmm. taskbar. So it's kind of a regression in, in Windows 11. But I mean, honestly. I think most people would probably mistakenly click on this a few times and then figure yep. out how to get rid of it, you know. That's my guess. My And I, I sound like you lately. I'm being like super <laughs> snarky and sarcastic. <laughs> But I'm, I'm like, oh, yeah, they're putting they're putting the weather way. widget <laughs> over there, right? Yeah. Because uh, they know that that's where the start button was and that's where people's muscle memory is. So you're going to go over to the far corner and you'd be like, oh, cool, weather. Click on it. And then you're like, oh, wait, this isn't the weather. This Microsoft is this is widget thing. Inadvertent usage, you know. Um, <laughs> that's why they killed Media Center, remember? They found out most people clicked on it once, saw what it was, and closed it. Yeah. Um, now they're, now it's like... <laughs> We're designing windows to, to work in that yeah. fashion. It's crazy, but. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Um, but anyway, yeah, they moved that. And and they also made it easier if you are somebody who wants to use WSL from the store, because it's a, it's a store app now, to actually mm -hmm. um, install it more easily. Oh, so yeah. they're adding that's some right. commands, right? That's, so that's useful for people and who use If you install WSL. it from the uh, command line, which is kind of the typical way, um, it will yeah. actually install the store version now. Uh, yeah. Not, uh, and probably yeah, you could. Right. And you could have these more granular settings like install it, but don't immediately open it. That kind of stuff will be possible. Um, yep. So, yeah. Yep. So, Leo, for the next story, do you have some sort of a, a trumpet sound effect? I like do. I do. Harold's Should I? trumpeting. Kind yeah, of video? yeah. 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 Let me let me get my uh, my trumpet sound <sighs> out so we can uh, we can give it because this is all this deserves. is the ultimate burying the lead, I would say. Uh, it is. Yeah, I wish you'd warn me because it's going to take me a second to get this here. Yeah, no, that's okay. I'm, bre I'm hyperventilating Joe, into a paper bag right now, everyone. So just you know, <laughs> Joe, so you, you know what's get happening. A, a drink or something, or um, I should. I was thinking about having a beer right now, just so I stay calm throughout <laughs> the next segment. All right, ladies and gentlemen, uh, let's get ready. It's time for the next segment. Oops, wait a minute. I said. <laughs> Lady, oh, I put a space in there. No, I don't want to do that. Ladies and gentlemen, get ready. It's time for the next segment. Come on, baby. Come on. I'm talking to you. Here we go. The next segment. Oh, man. Computers. Oh. Can, you just can't, this is like uh, landing a plane on you instruments. You can't live with them. You can't live without them. I tell you, I swear. All right. Go ahead. Just do it because I, I give up. All right. So we knew this day was coming, but... We weren't sure when or what form it would take, but Microsoft announced yesterday <laughs> they're like updating. Death. We know this day. <laughs> there oh, there is. they are. Sorry. <laughs> that was perfect. They're updating Notepad for Windows 11, everyone. Okay. So, what? What? What does it need? What more okay. could it need? Nothing. It needs it's nothing. It's perfection itself. It well, nothing. it does need one thing. By the way. All right. It got dark and, mode. Oh, dark mode. God. Dark mode support is huge. Oh, my God. All right. Goodness. For all you who love dark mode, I am a, I am not a dark mode person, but for all you who care, it now is going to have dark mode. I agree. Well, I mean, that's, a, that's a it's good It's like an eye option. care issue more than a like. No, I, mean, I think I it is. Yeah. yeah. Especially for it those is. of us. No, people I, like I it. Night hours. Word. I mean, yeah. It's yeah. one of the reasons I use Word now. Jeff Jarvis yeah. hates it. I hate Isn't dark mode. It? I can't. Yeah. It hurts my eyes. I, it really, really is bad for dark my eyes. Dark mode hurts your eyes. Oh. <laughs> yeah, it really hurts my eyes. I don't hmm. know why. There's, maybe maybe because I'm so used to white. Others would say the opposite. Yeah. <laughs> I know. Mm -hmm. Agree. Yeah. I know. Most people want dark mode. You're going to get dark mode. Um, well, what else? They, they didn't change. They didn't change a lot, which is what I love. They said we wanted it to be yeah. more modern, but still familiar. Thank goodness, right? Um, they're changing um, search and replace in it, right? So right. that um, – how does it work now with the new thing? So, uh, uh, actually, I, I never use exactly search and replace. But, so uh, I, this, yeah. this is intriguing to me because the, okay. the two the, – they didn't do a good job of showing the interface changes. They, they showed no. the basic interface. 
it kind of looks the same. There's a little um, a it gear does. for settings. Rounded over the corners. Far right of the bar. But the, the status bar at the bottom is the same with the word count and all that. Yeah. Okay, fine. Yep. Character count, good. whatever. Yep. No, it's yep. good. But there's a, there's a menu missing, right? Um, uh, and I was, when I implemented Notepad myself uh, two or three times a couple, couple of years ago, I was always kind of confused about what went into edit, what went into format, why those were two different mm -hmm. menus. Uh, format, mm -hmm. I think, is the one that's gone now. So it's like file, edit, view. Um, control H is how you do find and replace. And yeah. it just is a historical, I don't know, whatnot for people who are interested in this kind of thing. When I went, I, What I wanted to do when I created this app was use the exact mm -hmm. dialogues that Microsoft mm -hmm. used. They're in the system. I mean, why not use them? And yeah. way back in the day, uh, when .NET was new and C Sharp was new and Windows Forms was the thing, they came up with this interface to access that low-level type of dialogue. What I can't, I can't, I've got the name of it, but uh, and there was a, a toolkit for doing it. It disappeared at some point, and hmm. you, there were unofficial ways to do it. But basically, I ended up just implementing my own interface because it's just not generally available. Mm -hmm. And it is fascinating to me that they've updated this app and they had, they changed, they, they shouldn't say they had to, I'm sure Microsoft can access this stuff, but they actually changed that UI mm -hmm. and they didn't do it to, there is no like new win UI three UI for this. I, they created something right. unique of their own. It looks mm -hmm. modern and it's fine, but it's just fascinating to me because that was one of my stumbling blocks when I mm -hmm. did my own notepad <laughs> and <laughs> That that is one of the things they changed mm -hmm. as well as uh, very is yeah. maybe not coincidental. I, I thought that was interesting. So there is there a settings page for Notepad no. like dedicated no, settings page? No, no, and that's no. why I think the format edit yeah. thing. I, I want to see how those new menus look because mm -hmm. no, there mm -hmm. is no settings. You uh, you can format things like uh, word wrap is one of them. Um, yeah. Uh, fonts obviously brings it well. Mm -hmm. Now, font, well, what else? What is in there? There's not too much in the way of settings. Uh, well, font no. is a setting, I guess you could say font is a setting. Yeah. Word wrap is a, a format, <laughs> so mm -hmm. I don't know, maybe mm -hmm. word wrap and font are in settings. I'm not really sure. Yeah, um, yeah. yeah. view is like a zoom yeah. level, you know, stat whether the status bar is yeah. on or off. I don't, I'm curious how they've yeah. divided things up, but yeah, 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 it's yeah. Okay. Um, Right. So I've, I've had a few questions from people about <laughs> this yep. because I, I, I am the unofficial or maybe the official notepad spokesperson mm -hmm. in case anyone didn't sure. know that. Uh, the queen of um, notepad, I think is how right. describe it. So I had, I had a reader ask me, does Notepad still allow you to print with this redesign? Yes, it does. I have never printed well, from Notepad in my life. I have never printed That's from Notepad before, but oh, um, by the way, print, yes. uh, implementing print also a real major pain in the, so they kept uh, it. Really? Yes, you, it? Can. Oh, wow. oh. Really you can. Really hard. You can print, and um, people are a little bit confused about which version of Notepad is this. Because remember, last year they said there's going to be a store version of Notepad, right? And then you still get this Notepad that's built into Windows 11. Well, it turns out the Windows. This is my understanding based on some conversations mm -hmm. today. Window the one that's built into Windows 11 is updated through the store, right? So okay. they did not commit to. Um, bringing these new changes to the Windows 10 version of Notepad. They didn't say they will do that or won't. They didn't say yeah. anything about that, right? But this version that they updated yesterday is the one that's bundled with Windows 11 and that is updated through the store. Through that's store. what's okay. going on. Yeah. I haven't gotten the update yet. I've been looking for it. Um, yeah, yeah. I'm not, I, and I looked in the store. I figured that's how you would get it. It is, Yeah. I don't uh, even want fine. to look. I'm a little scared. To look. <laughs> okay. Well, um, is it? You have to be on the dev though, channel, right? right? It's dev yeah. Channel. yeah. Right. So you want to you so want to worry about it. this for months. Yeah. That's good. That's good. I okay. I would like it just for um, uh, just to see. Right? Mode. And I'm curious what it looks like to me is that thing I I've said before about some of the other apps in Windows 11 and whether it's true or not kind of doesn't matter. But what it looks like to me is a Win UI update to the existing app. You know, uh, that the UI right. that you the, the rounded Micah corner background. stuff. Yeah. 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 yeah so, Micah backgrounds for people who care about that. Mica, you know, which is some material, building material. Like sergeant. Uh, this is like no a, a different mica. Whole different mica. Not Fluid, sergeant. Uh, <laughs> mica like uh, Isinglass. <laughs> it's a yes. uh, a material, like, if you will. Yeah, the, they call it a material. Right. <laughs> so I believe this one is like the the one that originally shipped was called acrylic. 
and acrylic had yeah. some translucency th to it. Uh, I think this has less translucency. I think it's kind of a almost like an opaque style uh, material. If that matters. I don't know. I don't care. But now I'm curious. I kind of want to. I'd like to do a WinUI update to my app and see if I can replicate this thing. You know. Yeah, make it yeah. just like Microsoft's. Yeah. Why not? <laughs> yeah. Oh. <laughs> then, then what? <laughs> right. Well, Keep I the still, call I, mine, pad mine and sync. Other, mine, mine has other improvements uh, that okay. Microsoft. I, I appreciate yeah. them finally getting a dark mode. I already support that, yeah. but not not literally dark mode. I mean, I support the ability to change the color of the text and the background, so you could have a dark mm -hmm. background with light, yeah. you know, gray text or something if you want. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah. yeah, I mean, I'm, I'd like to do official support for dark mode. I think that's cool. Yeah. Yep. Hmm. So, yeah, I, I was very scared when I saw the blog post yep. pop up yesterday. But then I was read it and I was like, wait, are you happy? It seems like, you know, what? it seems like they understand they shouldn't muck a lot with Notepad, which right. is great that they understand this. Right. And by it's the good. way, I, I so I use Notepad and paint every day. And I have to say yep. the way they treated the paint refresh in Windows 11 is disgraceful. So this is a again, like a win UI front yep. end to the existing app. It does not support dark mode, so it's like this bright beacon of white light when it opens. The keyboard shortcuts are all screwed up now because they've completely changed how the menu works. So like Alt-F doesn't open a file menu, I don't think ever, maybe sometimes, but it doesn't always work. You can't do like file save as, like I, that's something I do all the time because yeah. now there's a side menu off of save as that lets you choose different file formats. Mm -hmm. That's in the save as dialog. You don't put it in the freaking menu. Like what? <laughs> I don't, I, it's, yeah. I just, it makes me crazy. Yeah. They've, they've really ruined paint for me. Well, not ruined it. I do still use it, but they've made it harder to use. And, uh, that's yeah. tough on me. Cause I use it, like I said, I use it every day. So uh -huh. I was nervous yep. when I saw the notepad thing like Mary Jo, but I looked at what they did. I haven't seen the app yeah. itself, but it looks, yep. it looks okay. You know, they need to understand your role here is the equivalent of mine with Notepad. You're the keeper of paint, and they need to understand <laughs> well, and they, they, do understand it. It. They, they They have treated Notepad respectfully because they respect you, and they've treated paint like a, you know, <laughs> a <dog. laughs> like a beggar in the street. Just, yeah, kick it, you know, just couldn't care less. Like, yeah, it's just leaving it in there. You don't like, you want dark mode? Yeah, you're not getting dark mode. Hey, at least they yeah. got away from paint 3D. That, that. You've got to look for happy little That's, happy linings. Uh, by the way, there was a horrible <laughs> moment, a little a period of six months yeah. or something. Paint 3D yeah. was going to replace paint. It was. I remember that. I don't that. know if people remember that, but the intention paint was it. paint was going away. Yeah. And uh, yeah, that was. No, that and was, I always was, was scared other, that would. I was scared that was going to happen to Notepad. Like one day they'd be like, and we're yep. doing Notepad 3D and that old Notepad is yeah, just going to go away. I'm like, this is, it's going to be old XAML code happen? now. Uh, <laughs> I hope, you're, hope you like to write in code. Uh, and, and, yeah. yeah. No, it looks, to me, no, the, new, the notepad refresh looks okay. I mean, we'll see. I think you it know, looks okay. Just the yeah. keyboard shortcuts, I think that's an important yeah. thing in a text yeah. editor, uh, to my mind, but yeah. we'll see. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Okay. That was yeah. the, uh, the big story. Yeah. That no, was going to be the lead them. today. First story was a big one. That's a big one. This next one's kind of a big one, too. Oh, well, what is yeah. it? Go up fire. Fire when ready. So let's see. How do I explain this? Last week, we talked about the build they released that day. And Mary Jo mentioned that at the bottom of the thing, they there was some language in there about how uh, they could update this thing before the next version of Windows 11. So I went back and I reread it because I kind of, I was like, yeah, I saw that. But, then I, but the, the thing, and this is the thing Mary Jo and I were talking about before you arrived. I... I have it in my head, and I think this is the thing everyone does these days. They, you have this idea, and it becomes a fact, <laughs> you know. And uh, I'm doing my own research, you know. Um, we, I, I was convinced that someone said that they would update Windows 11 midstream, you know, that not that there was a schedule, but that we're going to test these updates, and we're going to implement them over time, and then a year from now we're going to release a feature update, and that feature update would, you know be a cumulative update that would combine all of that stuff we already did plus some new stuff and that, you know, whatever that that's the way I perceived it. Mm -hmm. But the thing is, if you go back and look at what they've written, they've never actually said that publicly, at least not that I found. And so when I looked at this blog post, I realized this is the first time I think that they publicly acknowledged that they could do this. And this is how they wrote mm -hmm. it. 
Um, these dev builds, dev is, I'm adding dev, but because the re thing they're referring to is a dev build. These builds are also not matched to a specific release. New features, I gotta pull this thing over, and OS improvements form these builds, from these builds, sorry, could show up in future Windows releases when they're ready, and we may deliver them as a full, as full, oh, I can't even read, as full OS updates or servicing releases. Interesting. So a full OS update, I love Microsoft, they always mix the language and everything, hilarious, <laughs> <laughs> so that's fine. A full OS update is a feature update, right? That thing they're releasing once a year now. So we have Windows 11, and then next year we're going to have something, I don't know what they'll call it, but Windows 11, probably 22 H2, 22, yeah, right. Yep, will be the next, and there'll be a feature update that updates you to that version, right? And then a mm -hmm. servicing release. Uh, there's various word terms for this, but we'll call this like a cumulative update. It's a yeah, a, an update to the operating system, um, monthly update, whatever. Mm -hmm. So I wrote a post where, and I unfortunately the way I wrote it, I was a little too definitive. I wrote, let me find it. <laughs> Microsoft confirms it will update <laughs> Windows 11 before October 2022, right? And I quoted that exact quote I just read, where Microsoft, to be fair, it says yeah. could and may, not will. <laughs> but it, it because it matched my expectations, like I said, yeah. I, I did that human thing I think people do, which is, uh, you know, my opinion becomes fact. <laughs> so I apologize for that. But I, my understanding literally was that this was going to happen. So it, it when I saw the confirmation, I took it as a confirmation. Yeah. Um, Mark yeah. Hatch, Hackman, Hatchman, Hackman, how do we say that? Hackman, yep. Hackman, uh, PC a, Mag. Yep. Yeah, PC Mag, a good guy. Um, had a, yep. a, a, a lengthy kind of a Twitter stream <laughs> today. And uh, he cited my story and he talked to uh, Microsoft, I think. And basically the, sh the long and the short of it is that my, he says uh, it doesn't appear to be correct because Microsoft and then Microsoft changed the wording of the post after the fact. And I was like, wow. So I looked at the language they used in the build they released today. This is what happened just before the show started. Mm -hmm. And that quote I just read is identical between last mm -hmm. week's build and this week's build. They actually didn't change the language there. They're, I think he, yeah. he might be referring to a different part of the post. Mm -hmm. And that's not, I guess that's not super important to the conversation. But it is, I guess, to, to clarify what Microsoft said and not to put my own, <laughs> you know, worldview on top of it. Microsoft did, for the first time, confirm last week that they could, and I think probably will, and I think Mary Jo would agree with that, update yeah. Windows 11 before next October, meaning that the features they're testing right now in the dev channel, some of them or all of them or whatever, some combination of them, could appear in the stable version of Windows 11 sometime in the next eight to nine months or whatever it is, right? Mm -hmm. yeah. To me, and this is the way I wrote it, they would never do this before the end of the year, Right. Windows 11 just shipped. They're going to be off for most of December. This is mm -hmm. something you start looking at in early 2022. In fact, we're going to see 12th gen, uh, what, what I'll call, still call U-series Intel chips, and the PCs based on them appear at CES mm -hmm. the first week of January. And those computers will start appearing in you know, February, March, April, whatever. It is reasonable to assume that if they're going to do this, that the timing for the first of what could be the only or several of these kinds of updates might be timed to that. That's my opinion. Mm -hmm. That's not a fact. Mm -hmm. But um, but regardless of what I've superimposed on top of this, I, I guess, because I can't find any other reference to it, that this this does represent the first time they've confirmed that they could do this <laughs> to, yeah, to be agreed. as mealy mouth as Microsoft yeah. is. <laughs> yep, I think that's right. Um, I think we, like, at first you're like, oh, they're going to do one feature update a year. So everything that's in the dev channel right now is going to have to wait till the fall, right? But that now we know that's, that's not That's a true. long way to go. It uh, is. To fix an OS that has a lot of holes, a lot of regressions yeah. right from Windows right. 10. Um, right. A lot of weird little problems, you know. Um, yeah. Yep. Yeah. So I the think reason, it's reasonable. Yeah, I do too. I think I think it's very reasonable to assume some of the stuff, especially fixes, and maybe mm -hmm. some features will come in the form of a cumulative update before next fall. Um, well, by the, the way, reason. Yeah. Go ahead. Nope. No. No. Right. I'm sorry. No. Okay. The reason there's such sticklers about talking about when is the feature update and how often is because of the support life cycle, right? So yep. they don't want to say 
there's two, like they can't call the thing that comes out if there is a thing in the spring, a feature update, because that'll screw up the whole support cycle clock, right? They have a set amount of time, they support these releases, and they have announced the extension of the support window um, for Windows 10 and for Windows 11. And the thing they don't want to do is trigger this before it's supposed to kick off because that'll drive IT people crazy. So here's, right. a, here's a little <laughs> exercise for everybody. Yeah. I think it's possible they've already done this. I think they've yeah. already added features to Windows 11 that they started to, but, but let me make sure that's true. Um, <laughs> yeah. I think Paint is an example of this, right? When Windows 11 first shipped on October 5th, didn't it just include the old Paint? Yeah, but do you do you call Paint part of the OS, even though it it's bundled with it, but it's an app? Well, right? I mean, I, well, Notepad they're testing that now. That's something that yeah. could appear. I consider publicly, it an right? app. I, mean, I still consider you know, that a separate app. Okay, but yeah. I mean, I'm, you know, I, that might be. Yeah, maybe I, I that's what they're that, thinking. Yeah, yeah. Maybe more specifically, um, we know that over the past year or two, Microsoft has <laughs> tested other ways of updating the system, right? Broadly, yeah. And that there's a range of ways now, but the, it used to be. Right. You know, Windows updates of whatever form, cumulative updates mm-hmm. and feature updates, and then on yep. the far end was uh, the store, and the store would update apps. Yeah. Um, n- now there are these things in the middle, <laughs> you know, like sort of feature packs, uh, right? Is that well, what Windows they call feature them? Feature experience packs. Pack. Yeah. Feature um, experience pack. Then there was yep. going to be the system update pack thing, which I think they right. talked about in a blog post, but then they pulled it. I don't think it worked. Um, okay. So. Who knows what's in that? They they would never say what that was supposed think, to be. But I think the point of right. all that stuff is, regardless of the details, regardless yeah. of the specifics, is to do what other platform makers are doing. We talked about this, yeah. you know, update mm-hmm. the system without requiring you to install a new version of the operating system. Yeah. You know? Yep. Yeah. And, and mm-hmm. get that yep. stuff out of that monolithic update yeah. chain, you know? Mm-hmm. I mean, Microsoft mm-hmm. just released a project, okay. re, uh, the, uh, the Windows app SDK, and the whole point of that is to deliver features to developers that aren't tied to a Windows version. Yeah. Um, Microsoft will do this in the o- uh, OS itself, deliver features mm-hmm. that aren't tied to an OS version. Of course. Yep. Now, I, I'm saying right. this like it's absolutely happening. I'm sorry, I keep doing it, but <laughs> I, I... Yeah, I think just, you're right. I think it's going to happen. that they're going to do this. Yeah. Thing. Yeah. I, I mean, they, can't, I, they don't want to be definitive just in case... For some reason, they can't, won't, right. don't do it. And then people will, will be writing blog posts oh, yeah. saying they said they were going to do this and they didn't, right? So they're just right. hedging their bets, right? <laughs> That's what I think. Yeah. 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 So. We have exhausted the subject. <laughs> <laughs> Well, Leo, I think you know. We could call it Update Gate. No, but, <laughs> but yes, we should move on. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> um, uh, yeah, I think we could. Uh, I'm, I'm looking at the uh, rest of the show. Right. It's so hard to do timing with you guys because I know one line yeah. uh, on a on the, the size of the notes does not equate the size and time no. that it takes to no. discuss. So I'm looking for things that will set you off. <laughs> <laughs> Well, um, that's it for setting me off. I, I would say most of the rest of this is good news or indifference yeah. as far as yeah. I'm concerned. All right. Um, well, this would be then a good time to pause because um, I, I, I want to make sure you, you know, I have time for every, every little thing in this fabulous show. Uh, and I also want to make sure that uh, we give uh, due uh, consideration to our fabulous Sponsors, in this case, Worldwide Technology and Dell Technologies. Uh, WWT, you've heard me talk about before many times. Big fan. We went out to St. Louis and visited them uh, right before COVID. And uh, we're just blown away by their advanced technology center. WWT built this because, well, I don't know. Did they build it because they're at the forefront of innovation? Or did they build it because they wanted to be and now are at the forefront of innovation? They work with clients all over the world, transforming their businesses with enterprise technology. And it really is the heart of this operation, the ATC, because it's a research and testing lab that brings together all the latest technologies from all the OEMs. There's more than half a billion dollars in equipment there. And the engineers at WWT can use it uh, to spin up proofs of concept to test products to see how products integrate with one another and it's all for your benefit in fact and i'll tell you how in a second you can even use 
the stuff at the ATC. Well, I'll tell you now, why keep it a secret? The ATC offers hundreds of on-demand and schedulable labs free to anybody who's a member of their platform. And I'll tell you how you can join that platform in a bit. But just to give you an idea, with just Dell Technologies alone, there's Dell's VX Rail, Cyber Recover Solutions, there's Power Store, Power Flex, Power Scale, Power Max, there's Unity, there's Data Protection Center, there's IDPA. These labs represent the newest advances in primary storage. And I'll actually never forget when we went to the labs, there was this whole rack, beautifully lit rack with Dell Storage Solutions in there. And it was gorgeous. I thought, I would like that from, from, from my house. Uh, other labs in the Advanced Technology Center represent the newest advances in all the things you need to know about in business these days. Multi-cloud, multi-homed architectures, uh, security, of course, networking, of course, uh, primary and secondary storage data analytics, AI, even methodologies like DevOps. It's all in there, and it's all available to you. With ATC, you can test out products and solutions before you go to market, before you install them, before you even buy them. You can access technical articles, expert insights, demonstration videos, white papers, hands-on labs, all the tools you need to stay up to date with the latest technology because knowledge is power. And in your business, it's all about your business strategy. It's not about the technology for technology's sake at all. It's how it's going to support you in what you want to do in your business. Members of the ATC platform can access all of the resources of the Advanced Technology Center anywhere in the world, any time of the day or night. It's all there for you. Also, while you're there, do check out all of the events and communities WWT sponsors. Lots of places you can learn about technology trends, hear the latest research and insights from their experts, uh, speak to your peers. It's just a they've really created something remarkable. Whatever your business need, WWT can deliver scalable, tried and tested, tailored solutions. WWT brings strategy and execution together to make this new world happen. If you want to learn more about WWT, the Advanced Technology Center, get access to all those free resources. It's very easy. Just go to WWT.com slash twit. WWT, Worldwide Technology, dot com slash twit. Create a free account on the ATC platform, and you're in. You could, you could do it right now. WWT.com slash twit. We thank them so much for supporting Windows Weekly, and uh, we thank you for supporting Windows Weekly by using that address. That way they'll... No, you uh, you heard it here. WWT.com slash twit. All right. Time for the Windows Unarm segment. <laughs> you said yes. something funny, Short. Paul. You surprised me. You said you tested out this browser thing on your Windows on Arm machine. Is that are yeah. you suddenly using it and loving it? No. Oh. Um <laughs> what I so after last week's no, after the events where Raphael had pointed out that this set default button was there, I realized I needed to, I, I couldn't remember which computer had the dev channel on it. And sometime last year, I put the dev channel on this Windows 10 and ARM PC because that was the only way you could get X64 compatibility. And I wanted to see what that was like. But I left it on there too long and it went into Windows 11 at one point. And now it's stuck on Windows 11 dev channel. So I updated it to the latest build, and then I tried it there, and it was the one that I found first. What I, what you don't see is um, on the tops of both these, <laughs> whichever way that goes, um, the desks or whatever, the table, the uh, shelving, I, I had st stacked all my computers, and I was going through them one by one to figure out which one was on the dev channel, and that was the one I found first. So um, I do like the computer, though, by the way. It's, uh, it's the HP, I think it's called the HP Elite Folio. Oh, that's beautiful. It's a beautiful. Uh, You've talked beautiful about this before. Computer. I mean, it's really pretty. It's just yeah, if it's leather, slow, I don't... Leather clad. Yeah. yeah. No, I almost bought one because it's expensive. It's a, it's a genteel computing experience is what i say. It's for the CEO is what it is. <laughs> yeah. yeah. And, and he or she is yeah. not in a hurry. No, it's a nice computer. Um, no, I don't mind it. it it's, yeah. it's, you know... It's, hey, this just so, in. This just in. Yeah. This, so Qualcomm had their big annual event. Wait a minute. No, I have to interrupt. Oh, you I'm sorry. You buried the lead. Breaking news. And I'm hoping Chris Capicella is going to wear this. <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> the ugly Microsoft sweater is out. Oh, yeah. It's Minesweeper. Yeah, so Raphael you, actually Kev. pointed this out yep. to me very early on, and I was considered, it's $75. Yeah. 
It's got to oh, be yeah, gone. But it's a benefit, right? It's, it's a, a benefit. It's always sold out by the time I learn about it. Yeah. I could have I could have got one, but I was like, I'm not paying 75 bucks for this thing. Oh. Man, you might hope the lead. Again. Uh, yeah. Look at that. Yeah. Minesweeper. And it's a Christmas tree. Yeah. It's the I guess, I'm guessing he's going to wear this next week. I have a feeling oh, we know now. I would think. What the wardrobe <laughs> will include. <laughs> yep. All right. Okay. I'm sorry. I didn't mean to interrupt. No, no. Um, Qual something about Qualcomm Snapdragon. Qualcomm this past week, I guess uh, it was last week. This week, I don't remember. They just had their annual event, so they announced all the new Snapdragon processors. You know, they re you know they did the renaming scheme. Yeah, this for was their the event where they uh, we revealed that they had a deal with Microsoft for exclusivities. Yeah. So. Yep. Here's this is what's weird. We know that earlier this year Qualcomm bought Nuvia. Uh, specifically because they make ARM-based PC processors and they were going to, th their own PC processors have never amounted to anything. And so they were going to deliver next generation systems based on this uh, on these chipsets. And then later in the year, they said, eh, we're not going to be able to sample these until the end of 2022. So you won't see them in new computers until 2023. We thought, geez, okay. Mm -hmm. Problem is 2023 is like a year and a half away. So, or, you know, over a year away. Um, and what do you do? Are we going to let the existing, you know, chipsets kind of sit there and gather dust? And the answer, I guess, is no. So um, they are now on their third generation Snapdragon 8 CX, which is what they eventually arrived at with their own in-house chipset. Um, this is the chipset that Microsoft based their own. I think it's the, is it the SQ1 chipset? I think it's based so. on the 8 CX, mm -hmm. you know, the, for their mm -hmm. Surface Pro X. Um, you know, I, it's hard to know what to think about this, right? It, it's it's obviously, it's just a an evolution of the existing stuff. So how good could it be? It is based on five nanometer technology, by the way. So that's a first for any PC chipset. That's cool. Um, but, you know, you hear things like 85% faster CPU performance and 64% faster, I'm sorry, that was CPU, uh, GPU performance than their previous gen PC chip. It's like, okay, but What's 85% of zero? <laughs> you know, it's like, I, it, it, I don't know what to make of it. I haven't used one yet. I'm, I'm, I'm happy to see what happens. I don't think we're going to see a lot of PCs based on this chipset, frankly. Um, I think that any PC maker that's still holding out hope that this somehow is the future of the PC, I think we've already, we debated that last week, I think. Um, we'll probably wait to see what the Nubia stuff looks like. So I think the diehards, you know, Lenovo, HP, probably that's all. We'll probably release one each or something, and maybe I don't know. I think Samsung's got one out in the market now as well. Maybe they'll do something. I don't know, but this to me is just a holding pattern, right? Until yeah, mm -hmm. the real stuff appears. And then, my God, mm -hmm. listen to the language. It's like uh, always on, always connected PCs, extreme system level performance, speed and efficiency, multi day battery life, AI accelerated features, lightning fast five G, slow as molasses. <laughs> I mean, yeah. Yeah. Uh, yes. Tr truly mobile, light, and fanless Windows laptops. Right. I mean, this is what we've had all along. So. Yeah. Whatever. I don't. I, I assume nobody is super yeah. excited for this thing. But, no. But you know, we yeah. got to keep the hope alive. You know. So we'll see. Right. I'm, I'm, I'm happy. No, I mean, I'm happy they're continuing with it. I, like I said, I think it, yeah. it doesn't matter what the outcome is, as long as the PC platform overall improves because this happened. Yeah. Whether it happens yeah. with Intel, AMD, and or Qualcomm, I couldn't care less. Um, it's it's good. You know, it's good for the it's good for the industry. It doesn't matter in some ways because Windows on ARM still is not really ready for prime time. I would say so. Yeah. What's yeah. another year? No yeah, we thought yeah. Windows 11 was complete. <laughs> Let me show you Windows 11 on ARM. Is did, the last time I ran it, there were a lot of uh, Windows programs that just wouldn't run on. Uh, on arm at all it's, it's not like, bad it's just you know 64 bit emulations there at least now 64 bit but. emulation is there in Windows 11 that helps a lot yeah, right it does uh, it doesn't answer all the yeah. problems i mean you're gonna remember it, it, this is possibly two maybe even three years ago yeah let's say two years ago to give them the benefit of the doubt they were talking about core i5 i5 level performance you know right. um they never said what generation Core i5 could like Gen three Core i5 maybe. Yeah. Um, it's it 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 does not in any way um, match what you can get from an Intel processor yeah. today or an AMD processor. It just doesn't, you know. So no, and battery life. Come on, you got to make that real, or there's no advantage of using Windows on ARM. Yeah, yeah. I know, tough love, guys, but it's true. <laughs> well, look, I, like I said, I, I, I'm glad they're advancing the platform. I think the yeah, real same. 
jump is going to come if it ever comes with this Nubia stuff. So we shall see. By the way, to give you an indication of how exciting Windows and ARM is to everyone at Microsoft, just this week, they re finally, like seriously, think about how many years it's been, uh, released a native version of the OneDrive client for Windows and ARM in preview, <laughs> right? So you, anyone can get it. If you want it, you can get it. Um, it's also available for M1 Mac users. So it took them a year to deliver it from the M1 Mac. When I first tested M1, I, I think it was, a, I guess I got a Mac Mini about this time last year. The only big issue I had was, well, the, you know, being a Mac, was uh, OneDrive Sync was really slow. Like there was something wrong mm -hmm. with it. Mm -hmm. And uh, some people, depending on who you hear from, some people like, I don't know what you talk about, I don't have any problems. And other people like, thank you, this is a huge problem. Um, mm -hmm. But there is now a native ARM client for OneDrive on both Windows and Mac. So if you want that, you can get it. And then I, I don't know what to think about this. I, I uh, The FTC uh, following the UK has sued to block the acquisition of ARM, the company, by yeah. NVIDIA. And this one's curious because this is kind of a competition issue and it's going in kind of the opposite direction you might think, or, you know, when you think about it, because NVIDIA is based in the United States and ARM is based in the UK <laughs> and they're <laughs> stopping an American company from acquiring a UK company. You think you'd want to bring that into the country. Mm -hmm. uh, but I think the reason is there are so many companies that rely on ARM for their own designs. You know, Apple, yeah. Samsung, Microsoft, Qualcomm, you know, whatever. Mm -hmm. um, they're afraid that our, uh, NVIDIA might change the licensing terms, the prices, et cetera. They, they're worried about it being anti-competitive. Um, I think there are ways around that, but I'm not an expert in this area, but um, there you go. I don't know who, like, yeah. what company is there on earth that would be okay to purchase ARM that everyone would I, be okay with? Yeah, I have no idea. I was wondering that too. Like I'm a, like... Well, it's owned by SoftBank, <laughs> by, by, by the way, which yeah. is based in Japan. <laughs> so, like, what... I don't know. Yeah. I don't know. It's just interesting. So we'll see what happens there. But ARM, you know, ARM doesn't make their own chips, but they do design mm. the chipsets that become the basis for the chipsets made by Qualcomm and Samsung and Apple and all those companies. So I don't know. <sighs> it's enervating yeah. just to hear you talk about it, to be honest. <laughs> <laughs> Is it? Yeah. Well, then I'm not doing something right. <laughs> no, enervating's bad. Enervating oh, okay. means you're sucking the life out of me, Paul. Oh, there you go. <laughs> yeah, well, I, just, I just don't know what to say. I'm not sure. Like, but, oh, but like literally, I don't understand who, what, I don't mean who, because you can't really say who for a company, but what company could purchase ARM where everyone would say, oh, yeah, no, that's good. No. <laughs> you know, like what, what is it? What yeah. is it you want? The thing is, the they're owner? owned now by SoftBank. So it's not like some wonderful company owns yeah. them. I and, know. And, and SoftBank wants to unload it, so that's even worse. So somebody it seems should like acquire it. It's just a, a legal agreement between NVIDIA and the licensees that they would never change, right. yada, yada, right. yada. They always said that. Yeah, they said that. I think like it would make – people might be considered to make NVIDIA too powerful. I mean, I think if they owned ARM – um, NVIDIA makes uh, graphics processors that they can't even sell right now because they can't get components. <laughs> like what is, what is <laughs> yeah, but they make some amazing stuff. And they're in a lot of areas. It's not just uh, GPUs for gaming. NVIDIA is yeah. in, ca in uh, automotive, you know, uh, right. autonomous cars. That's uh, everywhere where, where ARM is, too. It makes it almost kind of makes sense. Oh, it was them. a good I, synergy. I, I, did I you, think it's a, the funny thing is, of course, it's a part stock, part cash deal. And the stock has been going up yeah. so much that it's now a $75 billion acquisition. Oh, wow. And I think, okay. frankly, NVIDIA is probably going, whew, that was a close one. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, it started. Right. What was the original uh, price? It was, on, it was around 50, wasn't it? No, no. It started like at 25. 25. Yeah. Okay. Uh, but the stock kept going up and up and up, and it's now worth seventy five billion. That's a, a lot more probably than it's than it arm is worth. You know? Yeah, it was. Yeah. Where is it? I don't see the price. All right, yeah, forty. It was four. I think it was forty. It was forty billion. Well, no, that was a set. That was again after the stock went up. It's. <laughs> I remember this only because I said. I remember predicting. Oh, they're they're going to spend like thirty billion for arm, and people laughed at me, right. and they said, <laughs> no, it's not worth that, and I think. <laughs> 
it probably isn't worth that, but it because of the value of the stock kept uh, going. Oh, that tiny over. acorn has turned into a beautiful Ooh, tree. <laughs> and then the English don't, you know, there's concerns because Arms and English company, and they don't want to, ex yeah. right. you know, export their. Well, the technology. UK government has also tried to block this yeah, stuff yeah. because of national yeah. security reasons. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. I think Poland is going to win. <laughs> <laughs> isn't it? Isn't Poland the one that said you can't do it? Somebody, it's so silly. It's so silly. They should give it to the Swiss. Yeah. 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 Give it to the Swiss. Who could? Who, yeah. Anybody be better than SoftBank? <laughs> yeah. Well, That's true. Uh, mm. You don't want like a. I don't know. Go, I don't know. Amazon, Google, I Microsoft, you know, or Intel. No, right? It's like <laughs> oh, Intel. Geez, right, right. Yeah. Anyway, it's it's it's, it's over. I mean, it's really over. I don't think it's going to yeah. survive any of these challenges. Yeah. So, yeah, I think um, so too. I yeah. think that's the the final step. Yeah. Hmm. Uh, <laughs> I don't know why, but for some reason, I remember reading that. Poland actually said, no, you can't. <laughs> I don't remember. Did anybody that. I might be wrong. Poland draws the line. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's it. It's over. Poland um, has stepped in and saved the world. <laughs> Microsoft 365. Yeah, so the first item, I have to say thanks to the Discord um, folks for bringing it to my to attention. They're so good. Last yeah. week. Yeah. So when we did our Q&A, this thing came up and they said, what about this other thing Microsoft's going to do to increase prices? And I didn't even know about this. So I started digging into it. And there's this partner program they announced, um, I guess, earlier this year called the New Commerce Experience, NCE. Sounds like goodness, right? New Commerce, who's against New Commerce? Well, what they're doing with this thing is really um, putting rather onerous terms on Microsoft partners, you know, who are the lifeblood of Microsoft, um, people who are in the cloud solution provider program, they're saying they're giving them all these new terms under this where they're, they're liable for a lot of things that their users are going to do. And maybe they are to an extent now, but um, under this NCE program, which is meant basically to try to get partners to sell customers longer term contracts they, like Microsoft doesn't like it when you pay for Office per month. They want you to pay for Office per year at least, or if not every three years, right? And they give you guarantees, like the price won't go up. We won't change the terms if you do that. But now they're saying to partners, we really want you to make this a thing. And they're taking away um, the idea of a, of a one-month subscription. Well, they're not taking it away, but they're saying, if you want to continue to do one month, we're going to charge you 20% more. Um, than you would pay if you did one year or three years. So um, if, a, if a customer cancels a contract and you're halfway through, the partner has to keep paying until the renewal date. Like there's all these kind of crazy terms in there. And obviously partners are not happy about these new terms. And there's a change.org petition. There's a lot of complaints in the forum saying, Microsoft, what are you doing? Like, it's a pandemic. Has anyone told you this? Like, people are kind of strapped for cash and you're putting out all these new terms to try to get them to pay a lot a lot more into the future for your subscription products like Office, Dynamics, Azure, all these things. So, yeah, it was a real thing. And thanks to the Discord for telling me about it. I wrote about it this week. Microsoft gave me a Nambi boilerplate quote saying, yeah, it's good for everyone. <laughs> uh. A Nambi sounds like an award. I thought you got like a legal statue <laughs> yeah. or something. The boilerplate Nambi. Nambi show. Yeah. yeah. No, they give you this thing like, yeah, it's for everyone's benefit. Like this is going to be great like that we're doing this and it's meant to help, you know, guarantee consistency, blah, blah, blah. Your eyes glaze over. But basically it's to try to get partners to sell longer term contracts to customers. That's what's going on here. Yeah. Yeah. It's, I mean, if you can afford to pay annually, it's cheaper anyway. Yeah, you know, it for is. individuals or right. whatever. And it's better right. to do that if you can. Yeah. But during the pandemic, some people said, I had no choice yeah, but to course. go monthly like I was strapped for cash. It's kind of small funny businesses, because you know, like, there's people on both it. sides of that debate. Like there's people who want the perpetual license for hundreds right. and hundreds of dollars. Yep. And then, and then people who say, well, I, I, I can only give you eight bucks at a time. I think the yeah. thing that kind of destroys the argument against this is we beat the pandemic, so what's the problem? Oh, yeah, right. <laughs> yeah, sure. it's over, right? Maybe you've heard over. of something, a little something <laughs> I like to call Omicron, my friend. Yes. <laughs> yes. 
<laughs> we did it. <laughs> ah, you know, yeah. when I was a kid, I learned the Greek, the ancient Greek alphabet, and this is the first oh, yeah. time that's that's it's come in handy. Been useful, yeah, yeah. I thought it was the villain from the um, Transformers, Omega Man, or I, something. Yeah, yeah. No. <laughs> Alpha, Beta, Gamma, Delta, yeah. Epsilon, Zeta, Eta, Theta, Iota, Kappa, Lambda, Mu, Nu, Xi, Rho. And then, by the way. They said, we didn't want to use new because it's confusing. It's not the new coronavirus. And we didn't want to use right. C because no one can say it. <laughs> yeah. So they skipped right to Omicron, uh, which no one can say either because, they, you yeah. know, I mean, they don't teach ancient Greek anymore, which, you know, I got a bone to pick about they that. They don't even teach handwriting anymore. <laughs> Why would they teach ancient Greek? <laughs> <laughs> um, I took one week of ancient Greek in college before <laughs> dropping it. It was like, <laughs> no. Um, <clears throat> many people. Subway. You never know. You never know. Well, it, like I said, finally came yeah, in. Yeah, there hand. you go. It took a while, but there it is. <laughs> finally came <laughs> finally in. Yep. More people are getting the rounded corner office update. That's not the name, by the way. Uh, no, it's not. <laughs> That's my name. That's my name for it. <laughs> what do you call it? What do you call that? Yeah. It's the Windows like the office 11 visual office update. Refresh or something. Yeah, yeah. So they made they made a version of Office where it looks better to use with Windows 11 rounded corners. There's probably some of that mica stuff, who knows. I don't know. Like all the stuff I don't care about, fluent things. I think it's beautiful. Um, it's yeah, gorgeous. it looks it's gorgeous. beautiful. Right. So more and more people are getting it. I'm having people email me saying, did you know there's a new version of Office out? I'm like, yes, yeah, the round a corner office. I know. Yeah. There's also a different ribbon display option on it. And that's about it Wait. feature wise from what I can tell. Right. A different ribbon display. Talk to me. Yeah. Some people are seeing a, um, I think it's a collapsible ribbon. Is that right? Uh, okay. I don't know. No, it already, it already, it already collapsed. I, I, <laughs> what I was going to say was simplified ribbon. I would love the simplified The quick ribbon. access toolbar is now concealed to make room for a simpler interface, but it can be revealed by a right click on the office ribbon or by clicking on ribbon display <laughs> options. Well, okay, hold icon. on a second. First of all, I think the reason it was it disappeared is because there's no more room up there. They've, they've cluttered right. that title bar area with yeah. so much junk. Auto oh, save, the, the name of the document, hate. search bar, the <laughs> premium features, little announcement yeah. thing. Like you almost yeah. can't grab the top of it to drag the window you around. It's like no space. No, you can't. I know. Yeah, that's funny. Yeah. Okay. So it's it's a somewhat different ribbon, I guess, look and feel on it. I don't know because I try to not look at the ribbon. It makes me sad. Um, I collapse it by default. That's why I was. Yeah. Because uh, just yeah. to make it, you know, simpler looking or whatever. Right. Yeah. But yeah, if you see this, you're supposed to be getting this. It's not a surprise. I've had people go, oh, I don't think you guys reported yeah. this. It's supposed to be new. No, it's not new. We know it's coming. It's just taken a while. And well, I think only yeah, they 50% of- they in June, of, right? They yeah, started rolling it out 50% of people summer. have it now. Yeah. Yeah. And, and uh, <laughs> yeah. yeah, sometime in the past yeah. week, they accelerated the rollout. Someone right. told me it was 100% rolling out, but I don't, I didn't see any language to that effect. No. Nah. I know a lot of people, a lot more people are getting it. I'm not sure when the end date is supposedly for the rollout, but just if you see it, that's what's happening. You're getting an intentional refresh on your office. This isn't a big brand. You know, we've been hearing like there's a whole different version of office. Like at one point we were hearing PWA, like that they were redoing office. This yeah. is not that. This is not that. Yeah. No, you don't have to dive too deep into it to realize it's the same no. thing. But the the, it is. You know, the surface level. Yeah. It looks a little nicer, different. Yeah. Yeah. That's all. That's all I wanted to say on that. Okay. Okay. Well, if you're sure, because you know what that I know. means. I do. <laughs> I do. So I, I got up. Uh, yeah. Or maybe it was when I was going to bed last night, you know, <laughs> and, and I have one of those devices uh, I think it was an Amazon Echo, but uh, mm -hmm. Google does it too, where they put your calendar up, like your big appointment for the next day. And my right. all-day appointment for today was Halo Infinite, Infinite Ships. Yeah. And I think it was like, <laughs> you know, it said all day, Halo. And I thought, maybe this is a hint. I shouldn't oh, go I to wish, work I today. wish it had been all day, Leo. I wish it had been all day. <laughs> have you, have you done, today's the day, yeah? So it didn't appear until 11 a.m. PT. Uh, yeah, or... Maybe it was 10 a.m. PT. 1 a.m. I think it was 1 p.m. ET. Oh, uh, unfortunately. Kind of and the, the really the thing they really screwed up, unfortunately, was they didn't let you preload it. 
So when that time arrived, you oh, could you're start downloading, downloading. baby. You're <laughs> yeah. downloading. And to answer the question we got last week, um, if you have the multiplayer beta installed, you install it from there and it becomes Halo Infinite. And then you do get those choices, like I said, in the one app where you can go between campaign and multiplayer. Um, so that is the way that works. Um, it takes a long time to download. It's not particularly big, honestly, for a, a modern AAA shooter, but um, they're capping the downloads because the entire planet's trying to play this thing. Here's the good news. Um, I did have, I got into the beta last week and um, for the campaign, and it is, it's awesome. It, it's, is it? It's awesome. Oh, yeah, it's awesome. Oh, and boy. The way I would describe it's hard to explain like like a like the way a game feels is kind of a weird thing to talk about but if you're like say you're a Call of Duty player and you see oh there's this thing called Battlefield like I might want to try Battlefield or maybe you know um uh, Fortnite happens like oh, I want to see what's going on in Fortnite you know the problem switching between shooters is the feel of these games is so different you're completely disoriented when you jump into a different one and that can be true between different Call of Duty versions as well I mean I, when I went from Black Ops 4 to the remake of modern, or the new version of Modern Warfare. Modern Warfare felt so different. It was like playing an alien game. It was just, it was weird. Like it didn't, didn't feel right. Um, Halo, uh, there's a familiarity to it. I mean, the first three Halo games are some of the best games I've ever played in my entire life. Huge, huge, huge games. Replayed and replayed it multiple times, every one of them. Um, it's familiar on that note. So it's it looks, you hear the music swells and you're like, oh my God, this is amazing. It's Halo. It, but the 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 feel of the game and and the immediacy at which you just immediately understand how everything works and you're just playing it and there's no like how does the you don't think about how the controls work, it's astonishing. It is the tightest, most well made shooter I've ever seen. It's amazing. Wow, better than Call of Duty. Yeah, yeah. Oh yeah, yeah. It's but that's great. your game, Call of Duty. You would, are you going to give up Call yeah. of Duty for Halo Infinite? We'll see. So here's the, the, the wow. problem I have. Is, I, I, I know. So I, I got early access to it. I did not finish it. Right. And then at some point on Tuesday, I went into play and it says, oh, this game needs an update. I'm like, cool. And it's like, there's no update. And I couldn't get in anymore. And then I went and looked at the documentation they gave me and they, they told me this was going to happen. I just didn't see it. So I didn't, I couldn't play it for the past day and a half. And then I, when I, st I just downloaded it for the, uh, for the show. When I start the campaign again, I have to start it over. It's I don't even get credit for what I oh. so oh, I didn't that get hurts. any achievements or anything. Yeah, oh. so that that does. I'm, now I'm glad I didn't get like three quarters of the way through it. It's a big story, oh. and I don't want to give any spoilers. But I will say this: um, I never finished Halo Four or Five because I hated those games. I, they were terrible, and I actually had no idea where the story went. And I think it's important for anyone who plays this. Well, maybe it isn't actually. It's interesting because they kind of jumped the shark with Halo over the past two games. And like in Halo 4, Cortana was breaking down. At the, the uh, Cortana in the game is the AI companion of the main character. Just like real life. Yeah, <laughs> falling apart. Yeah. Well, in Halo 5, this thing comes back and she's the villain. And she, she, like, she goes to enslave in humanity. At the end, she's poised to take over the earth. <sighs> I told Master Chief. So Chief when Halo Infinite opens, I don't know what he to, was thinking. You have Sorry, to. Go yeah, ahead. So no, it's okay. You have to. So it's like, well, how do they rectify this? I don't want to ruin how they rectify it because actually, who knows? Maybe there's more going on later in the game. But uh, they rectify. It is. If you've ever watched a TV show or, or whatever, maybe a movie where that now they have to make a sequel, and it's like, what did they do in the last one? It's like, you know what? Let's just pretend it didn't happen. It's a reboot. And they basically. They just they don't ignore it, but they basically there's like there's like a one, like the replacement for Cortana issues a one sentence explanation for what happened, and it's just like over. <laughs> now I'm like, evil. What? Bye. Yeah. No, it's crazy. Like it's it's it, it's but it's um. He's kind of cute, isn't he, Mary Jo? He's just he is he's so excited about. It. I can't believe he said he might replace Call of Duty. I was like, what? <laughs> well, I, well, by the way, Call of Duty replaced Halo for me. Like that's yeah, yeah. Before yeah. I went to Call right. of Duty, I sure. that Halo was it. You know, so is it and, infinite or is it really finite? Should it just be Halo finite? <laughs> <laughs> it's actually incredibly finite. So um, it takes place. Most of it takes place on a, a new ring world. Right. And it looks just like the other ring worlds. Of course, it has to. Um, but it's beautiful. And remember, you know, a year and a half ago, whenever you but August last year, you and I watched that event where they were going to like launch. launch yeah, the game, it looked whatever. like the old one. And yeah. we were like, man, this looks like garbage. Oh, like yeah. what's going on? It does not look like that. Oh, it good. looks amazing. Oh, it's It's awesome. 
awesome. And you can play it on uh, Game Pass, right? This is the big deal. This is, uh, Microsoft calls it the most accessible version of Halo. That might have been the wrong word to use because you hear that and you think it's accessibility. It's the most broadly available version ever. So most Halo games only appeared on console uh, and only on specific versions of the console too, depending on when they were released. Halo 2 eventually did come out on Windows Vista. Um, and I don't remember the most, re I don't think the most recent ones ever came out on PC, but this version is simultaneously available on Xbox One, Xbox Series X and S, PC, both through Microsoft Store and Steam, Xbox Game Pass, and you can stream it over Xbox Cloud Streaming if you have Xbox Game Pass Ultimate. So it's just an incredible swath of uh, platforms um, that you can play this game on. And uh, I have not tried it on the PC yet. Actually, I should try it on the PC. I think I will eventually do that. But I just uh, I want to get caught up to where I was on the on the console. On the Xbox Series X, at least, it looks – it's fantastic. It's just beautiful. And by the way, like the new, the new Call of Duty game, you launch it, you go into multiplayer, and it looks like a last-gen title. It's like muddy and bland, yeah. and it's yeah. – and it, I don't know what's going on. And then you launch this thing, you're like, here we go. Uh, it, it's it's gorgeous. So no major uh, bugs because this has been a problem in the game industry for the last few years. Uh, just buggy well, well, first releases. Yeah, I can't promise that. There, there's look, uh, you know, uh, multiplayer. By the way, I should also say multiplayer is free, and it's I, I thought it was going to be free until the game shipped. It's apparently it's, it's free, free. free. Going, it's, so yeah, so anyone could do Halo mul uh, Halo Infinite multiplayer without buying anything. I believe so. That's what they wow. were saying today. So yeah, that's interesting. How, um, how do they make money on that? Uh, volume, Leo. And they, <laughs> they must have, but they were going to have advertising um, in it, or or maybe it's going to be Fortnite style where you buy uh, yeah. goodies. Well, there are seasons, and you know they're going to yeah. do all that stuff. I'm not yeah. really sure. That's a good question. I don't know. Um, there, I, there now, been, see, now I'm tempted because I have I bought the Master Chief Collection. Yeah, but I don't want to hold go buy. A, I mean, I, I guess I'd have to buy the whole thing or use a Game Pass. But maybe I'll just oh, play the Pass, multiplayer. Right. Except yeah. I'm so terrible. I I really I, like the I can't I I, I I have a hard time getting into camp like single player campaigns these days. Like a that new Modern Warfare game, I eventually did go back and play it. Like after the pandemic started, just because I wanted something to do. Um, Black Ops Cold War, I never f completed it. Vanguard, I've started it. I might eventually do that. I kind of like the World War II stuff, but um, like I absolutely will play through this. Like this is the first single player campaign of any game I've legitimately been interested in and I don't I don't even know. It's been a long time. Wow. Yeah. Neato. It's really it's really neat. Yeah. I'm glad, you know, good good. This is you know they put a lot of stock into this. They a lot of advertising yeah. and but they clearly benefited from the year. Like you know, I can't even imagine mm -hmm. what this might be mm -hmm. a year ago. Yeah, you need to do uh, that. Um mm -hmm. sometimes and and I think there's such pressure to deliver on these AAA titles and yep yeah this is a big one and and it's you know and look it, it enters a world that is very different from when when halo first launched i mean if you would ask if you, you want to have a conversation about like console shooters i mean it would have been like golden eye right that, you know that would have been the right. end of it you know right um I, wow. they sort of and by the way you know the the matchmaking capabilities i think it was in halo 2 actually uh in multiplayer became the matchmaking capabilities in Xbox Live Gold. Like that's, Halo is so influential, it be, parts of it became Xbox Live, you know, um, and they're used by all games or by, you know, any game that has multiplayer. Um, and it's, and it's great. I, I, the, those first three games are unbelievable. ODST is also very good, the Halo 3 ODST. Um, Halo 4, Halo 5, you know, like they, they kind of lost me, not kind of, they lost me. This game, it's like, oh yeah, here we go. Like this is, oh, yeah. this is great. here we go, baby. And they all, they're making a point of it too. It's like, remember in other games, you could sometimes play other characters. Or it wasn't always Master Chief. No, no, no. You are playing Master Chief, and yeah, you're, you're going to save the universe. That's what you're doing. <laughs> you know, it's like we're we're just going back to basics here. And I, I kind of like, I think that was smart. Nice. <laughs> but you should bone up on the what happened in the last games just to see how they handled it. <laughs> it's it's actually kind of comedic because it, it's. Um, it's like the voice of Cortana, as you might know from your phone or your Windows PC back in the day. And she's like this insane AI trying to take over the Earth at the end of Halo 5. And it's like, what the heck? Were they? This is like, like uh, GLaDOS in the portal. Exactly. Yeah, it's cr except she screams and she's like insane. Oh, like I it's love crazy. it. See, I think I'd much more interesting 
to have an evil robot than a benign robot. Who cares about benign robots, really? Let's get yeah, some evil in there. It's almost like a it's almost a little love story in a way because oh. you know Master Chief is a cyborg who was made to be like a super soldier and and she's kind of in his brain. She's his girl. <laughs> yeah, they kind of you know wow. they they go through those. <laughs> see, Mary Jo, together. what you're missing. You see see the fun you're missing. You know, I think the reason Cortana's evil now is because she's mad she's been demoted at yeah. Microsoft. <laughs> she's mad about that Harmon Carden thing. I, she I is. Did, so yeah. She's still I, I holing will, a grudge. I'll, I'll, I'll reveal the two jokes I put into my little uh, preview of the game, which is I, I wrote the back. I wrote the backstory I just told you how Cortana was, uh, you know, was cracking up as an AI and it was, you know, mad because they killed Windows Phone, so she decided to take over the Earth. <laughs> and then the other, <laughs> the other one I wrote was. Uh, there's a new version of Cortana in the new game that they call the weapon. But I said, Microsoft didn't, uh, wasn't brave enough to name the improved version of Cortana, Alexa. <laughs> oh. Is this in your review on the, on the website? Yeah, it's in oh, my, nice. the first write up the previous. Nice. Yeah. I guess a review, <laughs> quick review. it's really good. Cortana burn right there. Okay. <laughs> Yeah, and then other stuff, who cares, because it's not Halo. Um, <laughs> <laughs> so Xbox Cloud Gaming, right, is the feature that used to be Project X Cloud, which is the f feature of Xbox Game Pass Ultimate that lets you stream a collection of hundreds of games that are in Game Pass to mobile devices and other devices. And one of the things Microsoft has been doing, it, sometimes, no, I guess in conjunction with the developers of the games, is adding Xbox, I'm sorry, Xbox Touch Controls, as an overlay on a mobile device. So instead of having to connect a controller, you've got controls kind of over the game on the screen and you can, you know, use them with your fingers. And depending on the game, sometimes it's really easy and sometimes that's really hard, requires the developer to do some work. Uh, but Microsoft has now added that functionality to over 100 games, which is kind of incredible. And 20% uh, of people that use Xbox cloud streaming actually use touch controls exclusively. So in other words, they're playing a game on a phone and they've never used a control. They're, they're just playing games that have touch control. So that's yeah, kind of cool. And the other thing, and we knew this was coming, <laughs> but uh, the other, in oh, other, the other story, no more. Are we done? We're we done with Master yeah, Chief? Yeah, I'm just going to move okay. right along because okay. I don't care about this thing. Um, <laughs> so sometime, I think it was early this year, Microsoft and Sony announced a partnership where Sony was going to look at developing a next generation game service on top of Azure. And uh, I described that at the time, like Microsoft could lose in video games and still win because if Sony wins, their you know their stuff will be running on Azure. It's cool. And there's a report in uh, Bloomberg that says that that this new service is coming soon. It's basically going to be a combination or a merger of PlayStation Now and PlayStation Plus. PlayStation Now, for those who aren't familiar, and I'm not super familiar, but is their version of Xbox Live Gold. It's that kind of sixty dollars a yearish thing that you pay mostly to get multiplayer. Same thing on Xbox. And then PlayStation Plus is a service that predates Xbox Game Pass. And it's basically, uh, it's actually a lot like Project X Cloud. It's a way that you can stream games. Is that right? Yeah, stream games, not download them. That's the difference between Xbox Game Pass and uh, PS Plus. And uh, there's some form of backward compatibility there. They don't have the huge library that Microsoft does with regards to backward compatibility, but it is a way on a PlayStation 4 or PlayStation 5 to play some library of PlayStation games uh, over the internet. So they're going to basically merge those things. There's going to be three tiers. Um, uh, one of them will have a library of classic uh, PlayStation, original PlayStation, PlayStation 2, PlayStation 3, and PSP games, which is kind of cool. And that that's the one I think that close more, most closely maps to um, Xbox Game Pass Ultimate. But um, we'll see. They don't exactly line up today. I think Sony obviously is looking at what Microsoft is doing here and saying, yeah, you know, maybe... Um, Maybe this is the right approach for the future. So they're going to release their own version as well sometime soon. We'll see if it runs on Azure. I hope it does. There you go. Okay. Also Halo, Halo? I can't remember if I mentioned Halo. It's really good. <laughs> is it infinite? That's the question. It is. Well, it's <laughs> it's the name. It's the name. It's like so many marketing things. It's just, it's it bit, just is. Yeah. A little exaggeration. Back of the book coming up. We survived the uh, Xbox segment, Mary Jo. And Halo a, lot of Halo. a lot of Halo box there. <laughs> Halo in there. Hey, it was supposed to be all day. That's what my calendar said. All day, yeah. Halo Infinite. All day, Halo all day. All day. All day. 
But uh, no, just He's totally not playing it while we're doing this podcast. Don't worry. Okay. Oh, look. look at his eyes. Look at his eyes. You see like lights flashing yeah, on my face. Yeah, back and forth. See, that's what happened to our bandwidth right there. <laughs> <laughs> you know, actually, might be what happened to Zoom's bandwidth. Who knows? It yeah. could be massive downloads. How big was the download? It's hard Gigabytes, to say because right? you have to download, you have to update the the main app first, which is the multiplayer app. So I want to, I bet it was, it wasn't as much as you would think. I think it was in the fifty to seventy gigabyte range, something Not like that. Not as much as you think. Well, no, in mod like a lot of like uh, some games are over 100, 125. That's what I happened. Mean, on a, there on we a go. joy per <laughs> megabyte basis, I think it's a good value. <laughs> <laughs> Pleasure per megabyte. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Our show today brought to you by Andela. This is really a cool uh, company doing something very, very interesting. And and the kind of the, the thing that when I was talking to them, that kind of uh, made it click for me is, is the line, uh, I was talking, I think, to the founder who... He said, brilliance is evenly distributed. It's distributed. Brilliance is evenly distributed. But opportunity is not. And I thought, you know, that's, uh, that's really a good point. Glo when you're talking about global. It's also good news for you as a company. And Della is a global talent network with a mission to connect brilliance with opportunity. Your company is these days expected to move faster than ever before to stay ahead of the competition. you got lots of priorities to manage. How are you supposed to find the time to both build and onboard an amazing engineering team that will get you where you need to go? And that's where Andela is here to help. But it's also doing a really good thing for the world. I love it. Andela is the world's first talent network connecting innovative companies like yours with top-tier vetted engineers so you have more time to focus on your core business. Why Andela? Well, Andela is committed to your success with their combination of expert technical recruiters, proprietary matching algorithms. They connect you with developers who are the best in the business, enabling you to accelerate productivity, drive revenue, and scale your business. You'll be very impressed with the quality of the developers you get. And again, this is, this is that brilliance uh, is evenly distributed, but opportunity is not. Many of these developers all over the world can't, you know, get jobs that are, uh, measure up to their skills. And, you know, this solves the problem because you need them and they need you. Now, I want to assure you, Adela has a very rigorous vetting process. Their hiring process is quick and efficient, but maintains the highest quality admission standards to ensure they place you with really good top quality engineers at scale. In today's hiring, uh, competitive hiring environment, Hyper competitive, dare I say, companies that limit themselves to local hires are really at a severe disadvantage. And we really learned something uh, during the pandemic. You don't have to be on site to do a great job. With Andela, you can tap into a pool of highly qualified talent from around the world, cut your hiring timelines down from months to days. You'll ramp up fast because, of course, Andela understands that companies, you know, have to do more with less. They have to cons consistently justify ROI to the stakeholders. When you hire Andela engineers, you can expect they'll be efficiently onboarded and they'll be ready to deliver value for your team within days. It's truly easy to integrate them into your team. And they're very smart because they understand that part of the, one of the you know, drawbacks to a global workforce is the time zones. So uh, all Andela engineers have at least five hours of overlapping working hours with the rest of the engineering team. You know, maybe it's not all eight hours, but five hours guaranteed. That's pretty good. Engineers are not just part-time support. They are fully embedded into your organization. That's important. If you go to Andela's website and, and look, you'll see a lot of references. Mindshare, for instance, they partnered with Andela. They needed 10 new digital experts, including data scientists. I mean, this is high-level stuff. Machine learning specialists, analysts, and, of course, software developers. Uh, this is a quote from the executive director and head of business intelligence at Mindshare. Quote, as we continue to enhance the Synapse platform, time to value is very important. And Della is a good partner in helping us identify the right talent fit for different purposes. There is a great talent pool out there if you have somebody like Andela who can identify it, onboard them, get them to you, and have them integrated, embedded into your company with a minimum amount of trouble huge benefit to you it's time to tap into a wider talent pool 
Stop competing with major tech companies for the five engineers down the street. Spend less time interviewing. Brilliance is evenly distributed. Opportunity isn't. Visit andela.com slash four dash companies to schedule a complimentary consultation. You can even get a two-week no-risk trial with their vetted technical talent. A-N-D-E-L-A, andela.com slash four, F-O-R dash companies. A N D E L A dot com slash four dash companies. Thank you, Andela, for supporting Windows Weekly. Thank you for supporting us by using that address because I think they know that that's us when we send you there. Back of the book time, Paul Therott. It's your turn. Yeah. For tip of the week. I have multiple tips and multiple picks, but I'll try to get through this quickly. Um, I think last week, uh, Microsoft announced. Teams Essentials, right? Four dollars per user per month, I believe. Um, you know, whatever. <laughs> Ten <laughs> gigabytes of cloud storage, you know, whatever. So, and we have our theories about why they introduced this, and yada yada yada. But I actually think they introduced this in part, uh, well, in part to anti or anti answer antitrust concerns, but also in part as uh, to upsell people to something that I think is a better value. So $4 per user per month, $48 per user per year, really, right, is reasonable for Teams. But if you pay a dollar more, you can get uh, Microsoft 365 Business Basic, which is $60 per year. So I, we'll call it $12 more a year. And there are significant advantages to using this. Um, the Teams stuff is basically the same, but you get... Teams meeting recordings with transcripts, team breakout rooms, Outlook calendar integration in team, and team, sorry. You get a terabyte of cloud storage versus just 10 gigabytes. Uh, you get the email, calendar, and all that stuff through Microsoft 365, single sign-on uh, with that account to Microsoft 365 apps and services, multi-factor authentication, you know, auditing and reporting, administration, support features, 99.9, .9, well, it's a two nines of, of uptime guarantee, which is huge, but better than zero nines. Um, I mean, just for the storage, it's worth a dollar per month, a terabyte of storage for $1 a month more, you know, to me, it's just a better deal. So if you're looking at throwing Microsoft money at Microsoft and only want to throw a little bit of money, um, I would consider Microsoft 365 business basic over Microsoft Teams essentials. Okay. Um, my second tip, I hope I brought this up in the past because every year this really bothers me. It's December, right? So we're starting to get Christmas cards. And if you celebrate Christmas and you send out Christmas cards, and those yes. Christmas cards are a postcard, basically, that is like photos of your family with a cute little saying on the back or something, please, dear God, <laughs> do this for me. <laughs> all of the friends that we have out in the world, yeah. they all live around the world, literally, yeah. not just around the country, but in other countries, send us pictures, uh, send us cards that have pictures that are kids. Yeah. And no pictures of them. No, I know. I hate that trend. I agree with you. <laughs> I, guys. We want, want to, see to see you, you too. too. I don't care about your kids, frankly. Yeah. No, I, not to be a jerk about it. No, I, I, I don't mind seeing the kids. But, like, your kids are not your entire life. A lot of I people do that. You. They just put the uh, kids. Most people do it. Or the it pets. It makes me crazy. Yeah, I, I'm with you. Yeah, oh, pets, please. I only Look. put cats. Sorry. Uh, okay. Sorry, guys. <laughs> is, Sira is it only just, Sriracha on your Christmas card? It is. I think yeah. you're right. That's I remember. I mean, that's like I've a, got, that's I got a, yours. a theme card. But, you know, we have... Uh, we know what you uh, look like, Mary Jo. We don't need pictures. You do. Yeah. I see. You do. I do see you all the time. <laughs> there are people I don't see ever. You know, the card arrives. I'm like, great. I haven't seen these guys in 50. Oh, good. Two pictures of kids that look sort of. You know, like my favorite <laughs> cards are the are the ones where it's like a whole slice of their year, like everything, yes. pictures, all kind. I want that. I want an update. I want the newsletter. Are oh, you gonna love my card then, Leo? <laughs> no, people <laughs> mock that. You know, this was a hard year. The, hard today, year. the Thorat fam. This year, the Thorat family went through a few ups and a few. Oh no, no, no! I we don't love that. that. Well, I don't mind no, that not, though. I like yeah, that. No. Do that. People do mock that, but it, or and include yeah. pictures, yeah. a yeah. little triptych. Right. I, no, I'm with you. I'm with you. I just you. can't stand it. I, the first cards have come in, and every one of them so far is like pictures of kids I've never met. Yeah. You know, <laughs> it's like. That looks a little bit like the guy I know, but uh, you know, I don't know. I don't. I don't. I People wish people are they, they really far too proud of their children. Just knock it off. No, no, it's fine. <laughs> Look, add the kid. I'm not saying the kids can't be there, but but I want to see you too. Your family. I didn't get a. I didn't. I, I'm getting a card from your kids. I want a card from you. And by like the way, just a tip. One year, 
look at the look at the uh, the picture you, you're, you're sending out with a with a fresh eye. One year, yes. uh, a family we knew sent out of the card, and it was just something weird about the picture. It looked like uh, the father's leg had been amputated. I don't know. It was uh, bended back behind yeah, him or something. Yeah, yeah. Yep. And we thought, yep. oh, my God. I literally, so. <laughs> what the, happened? The the, uh, there's a the card we got, I guess it was yesterday, is uh, friends of ours from back in Boston. Three photos. They're all terrible. Terrible photos. Yeah. <laughs> and it's like, guys, I <laughs> you couldn't. Do you even look at the thing? I mean, what, I don't know. Yeah. Just. Yes, yeah. have uh, Aunt Prue is going to start a, a Christmas card vetting show. I think <laughs> next hand yeah. photography. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Let's nice. just take a look at some of you. I got ones. Good friends love them, but the picture mm -hmm. is literally a thumb. Yeah, is like a thumbnail. Yeah. It's there, and right. there's all this wreathery around it. Like you right. have lots of room. <laughs> Why are you I putting a, a postage stamp size picture on there? I can hardly tell. Very upsetting. Very upsetting. Mm -hmm. Okay. All right. Anyway, so for most people, it's too late. Up. By the way, Paul, this advice I is, is I know, coming. I know. I, gotta, I know. Every year, I probably do this every year. Do it. it makes do it in November crazy. next time. Yeah, I'll stick to the tech from now on. Yeah. All right. So, <laughs> as far as app picks, I have several. Um, if you are upset with what's going on with the Microsoft and uh, and Edge and all that stuff, uh, there were two big updates this week that might be of interest. Um, Firefox ninety five uh, added a new form of sandboxing called RL Box. Um, it's specifically designed to prevent, and we'll see how well this works, but it's designed to prevent zero-day protections. Uh, uh, sorry, to protect against zero-day uh, vulnerabilities. Um, this is an interesting approach. I'm not a security expert like Steve Gibson, but basically it's a new way to do sandboxing. Because like, apparently one of the problems with browser sandboxing is that if you can infiltrate one of the sandboxes, it gives you access to the others. And this is a, a different form of sandboxing, whatever it sounds Sounds like a good choice. Um, Vivaldi 5.0 also came out across desktop and Android. Um, the only big interesting thing there to me is actually on the Android side. If you're familiar with Vivaldi, you know you can have a second row of tabs for tab groups. They've added that on the mobile side as well. So that's kind of cool. Um, Fences 4 arrived just today. This is the Stardock product. Uh, supports Windows 10 and 11, has a Windows 11 style UI. This is a, a, a system by which you can have basically what look like virtual areas virtual folder type areas on your desktop that can have applications, they can have folders, it can have um, documents and so forth. You can customize them however you want, all kinds of different ways to customize them. Uh, the big feature this time is a feature called Peak. And Peak is basically, it's like Windows key plus spacebar, and it brings up your fences on top of the application you're using. And that means you can access those files and folders and all that kind of stuff. So maybe you want to drag a, a file from there into you know Photoshop or whatever you're working on. So that's kind of cool. Uh, Fences, as always, is $9.99, but you can also get it as part of the object desktop suite if you want to do that. And then I should mention, and I didn't mention this earlier, but Halo Infinite came out today. We should talk about that for a few more minutes. Um, yeah, I've been waiting for this. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I, I don't know why. <laughs> <laughs> Available, multiple platforms. There's all kinds of stuff going on there. So, what are you? Are you like? Are you like going to go work for the Halo team or what? Like, what's happening? <laughs> no, <laughs> you'd like to. No, it's kind you of would. a boy's dream come true. Yeah. <laughs> All right, Mary Jo, you're up. It's your chance to right. uh, to spin this a little bit differently here. <laughs> a little, a little, a little less okay. Halo. A little less Halo, a little more Enterprise, <laughs> baby. A little more Hadoop. All right. So my Enterprise pick of the week number one is Halo Infinite. No. It's, um, <laughs> <laughs> secured core servers are here. Ooh. Um, you've heard of secured core PCs. Microsoft's talked about that a lot around Trusted Platform Module, TPM2, Secure Boot. Well, you also can have these same features built into servers. Microsoft's been talking about this for a number of months. But as of yesterday, you now can actually buy this um, running either Windows Server, a, ver a variety of versions of Windows Server, or uh, Azure Stack HCI, which is another uh, variant of Microsoft's cloud platform. Um, they've got listings in the catalogs up for for Windows Server and Azure Stack HCI. There's like there's at least like 45 different products from HPE, Dell, Lenovo, AMD, NEC that can run Windows Server and qualify as secured core servers. Uh, and there are four different SKUs from HPE for Azure Stack HCI. So if you're if you've been interested in this technology, Microsoft said if if um, 
if you believe in the promises of things like TPM2 and secure boot, and you understand that if you could secure your servers with these kinds of technologies, you possibly could head off some of the more common ransomware exploits that have been out this year. Maybe um, some of the, the exploits around cryptocurrency and crypto mining. Um, they're saying you should take a look. So as of this week, you can. Take a Secured look. core servers. You might enjoy it. You might. Uh, but that's not all. That's not all. Uh, we were talking about antitrust at the beginning of the show today, and we were saying maybe what they were doing with the browser and Windows could be grounds for problems. Well, there's a more imminent ground for problems for Microsoft right now. Um, in April, they announced they were buying Nuance. Remember the... Uh, medical transcription technology uh, company. It's their second biggest acquisition in the history of Microsoft. Uh, originally, they expected this was just going to be a very perfunctory approval process and it would close by the end of this year. And then on the last earnings call, they said, well, maybe not till early next year. Well, now we may know the reason why this is delayed a bit. Reuters had a report this week saying that the EU antitrust regulators are digging deeper into the Microsoft Nuance acquisition and sending questionnaires to rivals and clients about how Microsoft's acquisition of this technology could negatively impact them. So uh, this is a pretty big deal because Microsoft is counting on Nuance um, to be a major driver of their cloud revenues in the coming years. Uh, they've talked about it not only affecting the healthcare part of their business, but any any part of their business where they sell to industry because they feel like some of the ambient technology, the, the AI technology, the note-taking capabilities and transcription could apply to any industry and would be very important for them for growing the cloud business. So I'm not saying that's not going to happen. It's not like the NVIDIA ARM thing, but... The fact that EU is digging in a little deeper is a little bit concerning if you're Microsoft. So stay tuned for the next chapter on that one. Stay tuned for more. It's a cliffhanger. Yes. Do you think it they'll? Uh, do you think they'll be uh, told not to acquire? I I don't really see how this uh, negatively affects the market. Although you've got to wonder again. Which companies have complained? There's somebody who's complained, obviously, to yeah, for this. It's funny it's because probably Amazon. Nuance, probably Salesforce. Nuance <laughs> was the big fish that swallowed up all the little fish, right? They were yeah. the only. The, so, you know, there really aren't a lot of people in that fish. You know, uh, area. No, Dragon, right? Dra all the they Dragon, own Dragon. technology. They yep. bought Learnout and Housebee. No, or did Microsoft yep. bought Learnout? Oh, yeah. Did they? Yeah, they did. Microsoft yep. bought Learnout. <laughs> But Accepted. there really aren't yeah. like any any as far as I know, uh, the only competition comes from companies like Google, you know, with their own uh, text to speech mm -hmm. engine. Mm -hmm. So I I can't imagine really why this would be a a problem. They're already Nuance has already killed the market basically. Yeah. All right. Well, we'll see. We'll see. EU yep. doesn't. We got to protect those guys. EU, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> EU they never saw a merger. We didn't want to yeah. dig into. Pretty much. Let's yeah. do, uh, you know what I often say when I'm at the bar? I wish I had a beer that tasted like a Christmas tree. <laughs> I knew you thought that. Yeah. That's why, you know, it's the holiday season. I have a lot of holiday beers coming up. But why not start with one that actually does use a Christmas tree in brewing? Um, <laughs> wow. There are a lot of breweries doing this now. It's not a one-off thing. A lot of breweries are going out and getting spruce tips, oh, and they're no. adding it to beer. Yes. No. Yep. All you no. got to do is yes. use gin. <laughs> no. Yeah. Like, right. You could. You could. Well, there's right. a, there's a, uh, a you know, Greek wine, Retsina, which to me tastes like turpentine. Yeah. It's yeah. like made out of, but, but. I guess if it were just kind of a clean, piney scent, does it's it taste like gin. pine salt? What is it? <laughs> uh, it's so I've had the gin. one. Yeah, the one I've had a few of these. The one I'm making my pick is from Grimm in Brooklyn, called Super Spruce. So this one, <laughs> I love the name. Very, very piney, very wow. like resiny, piney. Um, they also add salt to it, and they uh, do some. I think they age it in oak or on oak. It's only 4.7, so it's almost like a Gozer-style beer because of the salt. Um, but definitely, if you don't like the taste of pine in your beer, you are going to hate this. 
But then there are other people who love the taste of pine and resin in their beers, especially if you're a West Coast IPA drinker and you're used to that, then you, you're going to love it. It's definitely a love-hate relationship with these spruce tip beers. <laughs> Interesting. Yeah. But a lot of breweries are doing this now around the holidays. You see many different types of spruce tip beers. <laughs> spruce tip beers. Well, it's yeah. festive. It is. Yeah. Yeah. I, you couldn't I've had come it, up with like I, a Halo inspired beer. Oh, come on, please, man. come on, I, you know, come on. I thought about that. I thought about something with Halo and Infinite, um, but <laughs> just fell short. <clears throat> All I could think of was Beyonce's rendition of Halo. That was, but that has nothing to do with your Halo. I, I literally have no. <laughs> no Micah Sargent will all. know exactly. Michael, Micah what I'm knows because I both Paul and I are going. I've never. No. We don't. Sorry. No, no, no. I Mike, watched the I know Beatles Michael documentary loves recently. <laughs> <laughs> I love yeah. the way you walk into the room. Body shining, <laughs> lighten up the place. And when you talk, everybody stop. Because they know, you know. You're the master chief. Just what you oh, say. that's not the words. <laughs> master chief. <laughs> yeah, baby. That should be the words. You had me at hello. See, hey. Micah's in the, in the Discord. I like the Beyonce reference. See, I knew he would. <laughs> I knew he, I knew I'd have he's a, a he's fan in the for Discord Queen because Bee, he keeps sharing his name and he thinks Queen we're talking about Bee. him. <laughs> um, okay, kids. <laughs> uh, I think we can wrap this up. So, um, oh, this just in. Uh, what? Halo what? Infinite came out today, guys. Oh my um, god, all day today, Halo Infinite day. <laughs> I should have worn my Master Chief outfit. Oh, you know, man. you buy a Master Chief costume and you don't get that many opportunities to wear it. And I miss the, <laughs> I miss the big one, obviously. Better than you guys wearing a Cortana costume. That's all I'm going to say. <laughs> yeah. That got a little weird over the, as the games progressed. That got too. a little racy. They, 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 yeah, they, they, I, they've dialed that I was looking at back. images. I was like, ooh. Oh, yeah. She was sexy. But you yeah, can't do that yeah. anymore. That's not okay. No, uh, that's not, it was never okay, actually. It was never uh, but, okay. But it's really <laughs> not. not certainly know. not in the time frame they made these games. Um, yeah. Yeah. Uh, okay. Thank you, everybody. Um, we do Windows Weekly of a, a Wednesday, around about 11 a.m. Pacific, 2 p.m. Eastern, 1900 UTC. I mentioned that so you can tune in and watch us do it live because it's fun. It's a party. Next week, I think Chris Capicella, yes? Mm -hmm. yes. So all that breaking news that Chris gives us, you're going to want to watch that live. The stream is at live.twit.tv. There's audio and video. You can uh, fire that up if you want to uh, chat with us at irc.twit.tv. That's the free and open IRC channel. We do have a Discord channel for club members only, but the club has some real benefits. Not uh, uh, Mary Jo Foley did a fabulous Ask Me Anything with uh, uh, last Friday, right? Yeah. Yep. Thanks to Ant. Ant did a great job. And so that's available uh, for club members on the Twit Plus feed. And there's some really good ones coming up that you can attend live or listen to on the Twit Plus feed. I guess we thought the main reason people would join the club is for ad free versions of all the shows. And you do get that too. So it's a, I think it's a triple threat. Seven bucks a month gets you a lot of value. Um, it's month to month. Cancel at any time. It's easy to cancel. We don't hide that. What else can I tell you? Well, just go to Club Twit's uh, website, twit.tv slash Club Twit, and sign up today. It really helps kind of even out the ups and downs uh, of this business, the vicissitudes of fortune. And it's a great way to show your support. Thank you. We got a, uh, I'm really excited. We got our first corporate membership, 300 people. In, uh, wow. In, yeah. Really, really. Uh, wow. We're, we're thrilled. Let me... Let me give them a, a give them a thank you because they deserve uh, a little bit of credit for this. I'm going back. Is it Microsoft? Plan. No, <laughs> it should be Microsoft. Uh -huh. It was David uh, Hickman uh, did it. Thank you, David. He works for uh, a company called Resource Management Concepts, RMCWeb.com, and they're providing uh, free ad free access to the Twit Network. For their IT and cybersecurity force, uh, starting now through uh, December of next year, so they bought a whole year. Well, uh, we do have a discount. That's also at the page twit.tv/slash club twit. Thank you, David. Thank you so much. Um, what else? You can get shows. You don't have to watch live because, of course, it's a podcast. So you can get shows on demand 
from our website, twit.tv slash WW. There's a YouTube channel dedicated to Windows Weekly. All the videos are there. You can also um, subscribe in your favorite podcast client, and you'll get it automatically that way the minute it's available. Leave us a review, please. Five stars would be nice. Uh, if you like the hmm. show, let it, let the world know. Paul Therat is at therat.com. That's his website. He's writing all the time. He's also got that book, The Field's Guide to uh, Windows 10, available at leanpub.com. And uh, Mary Jo Foley is uh, at ZDNet. She writes uh, all about Microsoft.com. Are you, I can't remember now, you did not, Tech Republic got sold back to somebody else. Yep. But you're still in Red Ventures. We're Red Ventures okay. still, yep. So Red Ventures, uh, for some reason, uh, uh, sold uh, Tech Republic, but they kept everything yep. else. Okay, good. All right. Uh, thank you, Paul. Thank you, Mary Jo. I can't wait till... Ugly Christmas sweater week next week. <laughs> we'll all be wearing our Minecraft sweaters. And uh, until then, have a wonderful week. We'll see you next time on Windows Weekly. Bye bye. What the hell? Was that, <laughs> it's my controller. Is that I, the I rumble? Is that the rumble Halo from your controller? I think it's Halo Prime Infinite, the guys. Oh my God. If you find yourself talking to those virtual assistants in your house quite often, or maybe you can make your light turn on and off with the touch of a button, well, Smart Tech Today is the show for you. Join Matthew Casanelli and myself, Micah Sargent, every week as we talk all about smart stuff and the fun that comes along with it.